Well, we want to welcome you back to another Marcio Weeks show. Yes. It is Monday evening, March the 11th. Marcia, would you believe the month has only just begun? And we're 11 days into it already. Oh Can my goodness. Can you believe that? How, how time is just flying by, huh? But Correct. it's such a joy to welcome all of you. I was looking at the YouTube, um, Marcia. Uh, yeah. in, in preparing for tonight. And I cannot believe how early people are getting on on <laughs> this show. I mean, we have people that were on since 6. I, I see here 622. But I remember one evening I was on and they were on from 509. Yes, yes. And I'm going, let me see here. I see this one. Oh my goodness, look at look at the times and so many. And it's so wonderful to be able to welcome all these different people with one purpose and one heart, our country. Yeah. Isn't that yes. wonderful? Absolutely wonderful. Well, of course, it's a particular joy of mine to have you joining me so early on Monday evening in your ravishing red. And I thought I would try at least to look a little celebrity tonight, you know. But, but and, the, uh, the truth of the matter is when we both came on, I was like, oh, you're wearing red <laughs> yes. as well. So you know what? It's a warrior. Tonight is all about, yes. it's about yes. us being warriors <laughs> and standing up, you know. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and, 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 you know, standing up for freedom of expression. No muzzling. We are saying, listen, we will not be muzzled. We cannot be muzzled. We will continue to open up our mouth, um, Dr. Ferdinand, and we will continue to speak. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, the only I've only seen two things in my life ever successfully muzzled, uh, Marcia, and that is a dog and a horse. And mm. I am, and I myself and you, you neither one of us is a dog or a horse. Now I know in this day and age you can you can be anything you want to be, but I I prefer to be a man and I know you prefer to be a woman. So uh, we we cannot be muzzled because we simply are not animals. It's as simple as that. We are human beings. Uh, we have the protection of the human rights charter, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of association. We have the protection of our own constitution and of course we have the protection, uh, while some people might not uh, necessarily subscribe to it as we do, of God. He's given us yes. the ability to talk. And, and I think he gave us that ability for a reason. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that this is one of those wonderful shows. I must say that I have been really blessed with the liberty and freedom of expression we have on this show, Marcia. I've seen, you know, the comments come up. Not all are always nice and whatever, but people have a liberty and a freedom to express themselves. And, and we are learning in the process, aren't we? Correct, yes. We all we're are. Learning, we are learning in the process. We are learning how to handle those who are objectionable to us. We are learning how to handle those who are in agreement. We are learning how to handle those who are going to be adding things to what we need to say and all of those kind of things that we're learning. And may I say, what a particularly stunning show you had last night. Mm. Oh my goodness! I I was on it. Um, I I I guess you must have seen a, a, a comment. I just popped in and said good evening, um, mm. but I was on it listening to the to the parliamentary representative in Ghana, um, uh, George. I think his name was. If I I hope I have it correct. Sam um, George. Honorable Sam George. George. Yes, the Honorable yes. Sam George, and to listen to him laying out so articulately and so detailed. And, and, and so systematically how they went about uh, establishing the fact that Ghana has its own culture. And this is how I saw it. We have our own culture. We have our own practices, our own moral standards, and we will not allow neocolonialism to impose once again upon us what they felt. Yeah. And uh, I wondered at, at some point, you know, if people were aware of the meanings of some of these statements. And, you know, we, we understand colonization and colonialism, but I wonder if people understand what we mean when we say neocolonialism, Marcia. You know, um, what do you think? Do you think they've got it? Do you think they've grasped that? I think so. That I, I, was speaking to people, I was speaking to people in town today 
uh-huh. um, you know, who were were watching the the program, and they, you know, they were repeating a lot of things to me. And I think I think people are understanding that, you know, yes, and, yes, and recognizing, um, you know, the importance of Africa. What, I, as you said, what I loved about um about it was uh, the fact that I like the fact that whether we, whether whatever we think about the culture, if we think it's if it's outdated or we think it's not progressive, the point is that they are trying to chart their own course. Correct. Yes. And 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 I like I like that about it. You know that they're charting whatever we think about the law. There are some people who are not. They don't care for the law. They think it's a bit too draconian. Um, you know, there are different views out there, and I'm not here to debate any of that. Um, what I what I love about it, about the, the presentation is is them being able to stand up for who they are. Yes, and yes, culture. and and I think yes. that um, I, think I wholeheartedly, I wholeheartedly agree with you, Martia. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that I got coming out of it. You know, we will not allow foreign entities to determine and dictate and impose upon us what they feel is what is right for us. We will make that decision for ourselves. And and I believe that is where we are even in the Caribbean and more specifically here in Barbados. We are not about to have economic, political, cultural and other pressures uh, placed upon us by other entities, you know, uh, my mind goes back to that statement that we often heard Errol Barry use, we will be friends of all and satellites of none. That just keeps resounding in my ears, you know. Mm-hmm. So it, it really was a tremendous show, and I, I was really blessed and also informed and educated. Um, a, a really brilliant. And, and what I also saw, Marcio, was the brilliance that laid within the continent of Africa, which yes. is often discredited and often made to feel as though, you know, we are not, or, or as Africans, they are not up to mark or up to standard mm-hmm. and they can't mm-hmm. match us and match us. That was clearly on show last night that, that yes. nothing could be further from the truth. Absolutely yes. nothing, you know. You so know, I, I and, mm-hmm. and I love I love the fact that um you know and that's the whole thing about um being free to express yourself. Yes. Free to um you know they're there in Ghana and they're able to to take a stand as a, as a nation, you know. And and I think that 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 is important where he is in Parliament and he's able to use his voice. And so I, I believe that we should not allow ourselves to be muzzled. And we can, you know, we've been living together in Barbados, all kinds of different people from the time that, you know, we, 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 we were born here or like myself, naturalized here, all different types of people. And we should be able to express ourselves. We should be able to speak out, you know, and, and a show like this allows for that. And yes, I think that's, yes. I think that that is, that is wonderful. But you know, it's around about the time that we do our anthem, and yes. I know that you have the anthem ready. I um, I certainly have it right here before me, <laughs> and I can click that button. I, as you can see, I have my flag over my right shoulder, yes. right here, and uh, I'm going to. Okay, here, where is it? Oh, there it is, and it's going to come up on the screen. But I'm going to stand to attention while it is being played so welcome everyone and god bless you we'll be back with you in just a second but let's all recognize respect and come to attention at the playing of our barbados national anthem
yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm almost playing it again. Oh, wow. oh yes. you know, I, I smile so much, Marcia, during the play when I see you running up along that street with the flag waving in your hand. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. But such a joy to welcome everyone tonight. Uh, I don't know if you want to go right ahead, Marcy, and just that so many, so many people there, Jocelyn. Yes, go Reed, ahead, go ahead. Um, and and Ansel Seeley, ADG, Colin Clark. Oh, my goodness. You know, you start this name calling and then you hope you don't get people upset because they don't hear their names called. But so many, Judith and Clark and and, and uh, Monica Inns, God bless you. Great to have you with us. The truth. And uh, let me just run down here. Pauline Maynard, Wendell Greenwich. You know, I let me make sure I get Alfred here because I, I I know Alfred is on every single show from <laughs> from uh, from uh, uh, where is it again? New York. I call oh, it New Brooklyn, York. Yeah. Brooklyn. Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. And I saw someone already tonight from Canada. Um, I mean, we're having people joining us from all around the world, and we are so thankful for the opportunity to be able to share so much information with all of us. Um, Tony Paris and uh, Diane Seely, Edwin Price, Nigel Newton. Oh, Nigel, so great. You're such a faithful warrior with us. Uh, we thank you for your support and uh, all of those that have been working along with us, you know, in one way or the other. Even just by your presence here, we are grateful for making the show a success. Because as you know, Marcia, it can't be a success without these hundreds up in over a thousand people. And, and then the thousands that watch the show afterward, you know, on, on YouTube. And it's so delightful to have all of you uh, here with us tonight. And of course, a particular delight to share again on this Monday evening with Marcia. And we're expecting some guests on tonight as well. We're going to have a great show tonight. You don't want to miss this. And I actually thought, you know, Marcy of saying the uh, parliament is now in session. <laughs> you know, the official, <laughs> the official parliament is now yes. in session. Yes. You know, I had the opportunity to watch uh, some of the debates today, you know, and and you were speaking a moment ago, Marcia, about the freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I must tell you that over the years, I have grown to become very, very, uh, watch, how should I put it? I don't want to say um, hateful. It's, it's a bit too strong a term of the disingenuous manner that uh, political uh, persons speak to one another. Uh, okay. There is such a lack of respect. You know, today I was listening to the Minister of Health sharing in the Senate, and he made his presentation without a single interruption. Yeah. And then as soon as as um, the opposition uh, senator, Ryan, Ryan, uh, uh, last name slips me at the moment. But, not not uh, strong, Ryan. Not strong. Um, uh, it'll come back to me. It's yes. one of those, I guess, senior senior moments, I guess, you know. But anyhow, Ryan, uh, you know, he was interrupted. There was such uh, so much cross talk ac across what he was trying to say that the president had to interrupt on several occasions to, to bring order and to allow him to speak. You know, and I find that so my mother would say it simply unmannerly, disrespectful and unmannerly. And that really, you know, I said to myself, well, if that's how they would treat a senator, it's no wonder that they would treat the ordinary Barbadians with such a nasty, disingenuous manner and call us all kinds of names and, and you know, uh, things like terrorists and you don't listen to that stupid show. And, you know, th those are not terminologies that we are any more prepared to accept. Uh, we are Barbadians. We are citizens. Right. You are you are a, a naturalized Barbadian originally from Jamaica. And we welcome you to our country. We embrace you in our country, as we have so many other Caribbean people. And uh, we live together in this country. My wife is St. Lucian. Um, incidentally, for those of you who may not know, my gorgeously beautiful wife is a St. Lucian. And I believe Caswell's wife is St. Lucian, too, if I, if I recall. <laughs> you know, but we have a tremendous respect for each other. And although on many occasions our opinions may differ, we have the ability to be free in expressing it. You know what I mean? Um, 
you you're from Jamaica, uh, Marcia. How 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 does it compare? How how do you feel about that? Um, you know, uh, for me, I've lived more out of Jamaica than I've lived in Jamaica. And, um, you know, Barbados, I've lived for more years in, in Barbados than I lived in Jamaica. Really? Wow. You know, and so I, I you know, for me, I, I, you know, for all practical purposes, you know, I, I was born in Jamaica, but I consider myself also a Barbadian, you know, and that's yes. something that nobody's going to take that away from me. Um, Absolutely. And, 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 you know, we've always worked together um, as, uh, okay, okay, I'm sorry, somebody just That's said quite it. okay, that's quite okay. We, we have been, we've all been inundated with, with uh, messages. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting a lot of messages. Sorry about that. Thank you for your that's messages, um, everybody. I am well. I am well. Let me just let you all know that I am, I am well. So back to what I was saying um, to you is yes. that, um, you know, um, for me, living here is uh, it, it's, it's a privilege that, 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 you know, I believe God has given me and has given me, uh, you know, a, a, another home, another home. And, um, you know, and given me an opportunity to serve him here and to serve the people of Barbados. And so I, 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 as you know, I'm not normally on this early, but I've been getting so many messages and I saw you people seeing me on my phone there. I have so many messages and somebody messaged me saying, listen, you're I'm on your getting. phone <laughs> and it does, you know, they can see me on my phone and it's not professional, but let me just let everybody know that I am well and I am strong and there's nothing that is going to stop me from being obedient to what it is that I am supposed to do. Um, there is something that I wanted to read for you all um, from my phone because this is, I also use this as my notebook. Um, so I'm on my phone looking, I'm going to, I'm just going to bring up something for you um, that, um, you know, about Clement Payne. I wonder how many persons really know about Clement Payne. Um, what, what do you, um, uh, Dr. Ferdinand, is he, are you familiar with him? Yes, I am. I don't know a lot about the history of him, though. So I really, I was really encouraged with the information. So uh, do you want me to try to put that up? I, I'm not sure. Let me see no, if that, I can download okay. it. I mean, I, I, I could just read that and I'm looking mm -hmm. for that on my phone. That's why I'm on my phone um, at the moment. And, um, you know, because I think that we need to understand a little bit of um, history is so important. It is so important that we um, that we understand, um, uh, you know, what has happened in the past. And then you see you see that they're trying to do a repeat of that. Right. Mm -hmm. Very skillfully trying to do a repeat of that. But it's a different time. I think um, they need to understand this is a different Barbados that we are in. It's a different time, and we need the powers that be to understand that, that mm -hmm. we are in a different time and doing a different thing. And um, the, this is a write-up um, by GIS. Um, just a little bit here. It says, the right excellent Clement Payne is the final national hero. He was made a national hero to be featured in our Back from the Past series, which introduces the oldest five of Barbados' 11 national heroes. Clement Payne became the face of the revolution when he agitated for better working and living conditions. Payne preached a message of trade unionism. Audiences received <laughs> his message with enthusiasm. However, his popularity made him a target of the elite class, and he was <laughs> under constant surveillance by the police. And I tell you, <laughs> you know, so I, I, I wanted, I just wanted to read that that little bit for you there about um um about uh, about Clement Payne, and to say to you guys that you know, I I I tell people that you know be messaging me. Don't, I said, don't worry, I'm no Clement Payne. <laughs> I am no Clement Payne because they trump up some charges against Clement Payne. And then, you know, um, you know, eventually they had him removed from uh, removed from the country and sent back um, to, to Trinidad. But we're happy for Clement Payne. We're happy that Clement Payne um, 
was in Barbados. We have a better Barbados today because of Clement Payne. Um, you know, a man like Tazel Franklin is standing on top of the work of Clement Payne as a trade. Clement Payne was a trade unionist and he's standing on the works of Clement Payne. So, um, you know, there's nothing for us to be uh, alarmed about. It is what normally happens. The, the, the elitist class and all of these different people, they will come out with attack dogs. Because what, why? Because when, you, when, you are, when you're enlightening the people, when you're bringing to the people's attention, you know, what is happening, then that is what is what is going to happen. You know, they're going to send out the attack dog, dog. And the reason they're doing this is to, um, because of uh, a, a lack of, um, just, just wanting to shut down expression. You know, that is exactly why they're doing it. It's a shut down expression, shut, shut down us from having our discussion. What do you believe? We, we live in a country where um, up until three weeks ago, there was no opposition. There was nobody in the opposition up to three weeks ago and a show like this and people like us <laughs> who are speaking out and and picking up on what the people are saying and what and what and educating the people enlightening the people motivating the people mobilizing the people and and um it's people like us that they want to muzzle isn't that something that tells well, you... me um dr ferdinand that we're in a dictatorship but go ahead. And it and it also tells me that we are on the right path because you would never try to shut somebody out up unless they're a threat, unless they're exposing something about you, uh, unless their 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 uh, information is causing you discomfort because inevitably it's the truth. Yes. You know, um, and of course, you know, I I you you know that I am a reverend, you, you, and and you would expect some aspect of reverentiality if that word exists coming from me. But you know, they try to do the same thing with Jesus. You know, they try to shut him up too, and 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 kill him. And and look what happened, Marcia. <laughs> you know, I have to laugh. They tried to shut him up and kill him. They should have left him alone, and he would have only had twelve disciples. Now he has he has over eight billion. God knows how many have died and how many are going to come. So <laughs> I would I would like to send out a word of advice to those who would like to try to shut this show down. I think it would be a good idea to leave it alone because you are only going to cause it to grow. That is all that you're going to do, you know. And as I told you when when I heard it. Um, I am thankful for the free PR and free advertising because now people will want to know, even if they have not been on the show, what is it about this show that has caused this? And they will come to be informed, educated, and hear the truth. And yeah. I know that everyone on this show is committed to the truth. That is one thing I do know. Uh, and you know, you know, um, uh, as um, the, the this comment here um, from Africa Bridge TV Network says, actually, the Calypsonians failed to write anything about the travesties occurring in Barbados between 2020 and 2023. Only one I I recall um, was Catfish and Pepper. Now, let let me say let me say this one. That's one of the I agree. That's one of the travesties. Normally. Um, you know, in our Caribbean societies, especially in the Eastern Caribbean, we use calypsos to be able to, you know, we express ourselves in calypsos. Yes. I mean, in the last couple of years in Barbados, listen to the calypsos and then you will understand how muzzled Barbados is. Yes. Listen yes. to the calypsos. The calypsos, they have no teeth. There's no bite in the calypsos. Because they, they are afraid, the Calypsonians themselves are afraid. Those and I, that and need I, to speak up, um, just a minute, I just say. No, no, go those ahead. Those that need to speak out, um, you know, they, they write um, poems on all kinds of different things, but they will not address the atrocities. I see children at Springer Memorial School where they rush out on those children with machete and all these kinds of things. And listen. Listen to the calyps the, the calypsos that, 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 that come out. Listen, nothing about it, nothing about it, nothing about this government because people are afraid of this government. But I'm telling you that this show 
like you see here. We are not afraid to open up our mouth Absolutely. and speak the truth. Absolutely. We will not stop speaking the truth. In fact, we're going to go harder. And that's why I was on my, I'm on my phone here letting you all know, don't, you don't worry. They will try many, many things. Go ahead, um, Dr. Perdita. No, I, 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 I want to endorse what you're saying because I can tell you, you know, um, one of the things about me is that one of the worst things you can try to do is to shut me up. I, I just talk a lot, a, a lot more and a lot louder and, and I talk a lot already. <laughs> and so, you know. Oh, you don't really want to try to go down that road with me. And you know, my mind goes back. I, I'm not I'm not a ardent follower of Calypso per se, Marcia, but I remember um, you know, during the Adams days and the and the uh Barra days and the and the Arthur days, the 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 biting calypsos that we had uh you know, year after year, the stinging bees and and all these different kinds of calypsos that we had. The, what, you remember Gabby uh, dealing with the matter of the beach and, you know, all of these calypsos that came out with some stinging commentary, uh, you, you know, and, and really and truly, I, I haven't been paying 100% attention to them over the past couple of years, but I have, you know, in listening on the radio from time to time, and I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, nobody seems to want to criticize this government. And and I agree with you. It's because people are afraid, and and no government should be satisfied to hear anybody say. And I want to be very clear with this: any government that is satisfied to hear it said that people are afraid of them should resign. That is the truth, uh, uh, Marcia, because then you don't hear from the people the authentic information you need to get. They will tell you what they think you want to hear. Because they, they are afraid of you. And so it, it, it does not give you, as a government, the authentic information to be able to treat to the issues within your society and to be able to deal with matters of health and education and finance and cost of living and all these different kinds of things. I listened to the debates today in the Senate to do with the matter of an amendment to, the, to, the, to a bill uh, with regards to, unfortunately, the government has admitted a mistake. Could you believe that, Marcia? That yeah. today in the Senate, in the public view, the government admitted to a mistake of going from the CEO to the executive director and are now coming back to a CEO at the QEH hospital. Could you believe that? Could you believe that I actually heard ministers of government admit that the QEH is, is at this point in time, if I can express it in my own terms, a disaster, that things are not well there. And I thought it was very, contro uh, not controversial, um, you know, where you say one thing and, and then you come back and say something else is totally diametrically opposite to what you said before. I heard all the commendations uh, regarding the staff. And then I heard one of the former ministers of health uh, chastise the, ch the staff in in speaking concerning concerning um, attitudes, how bad the attitudes are, and I'm thinking to myself, but this is the same staff you just that you just a few minutes ago commended for their great work and their great service, you know, and and unfortunately, um, or should I say, fortunately, they admitted to the truth today, at least on war things. So I would have to say that we are on a good path because we are forcing, and I want to say it publicly, we are forcing the government to reassess their positions on a number of things. We have this right. cyber crime bill. We have the child protection bill. We have the, the matter to do with the national insurance. We have the matter to do with the Trident ID card. And we could go on and on. Yeah. You know, um, and, 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 you know, your point about us having to, you know, holding the government accountable, Dr. Ferdinand, that is what they're afraid of. You know, I saw a, a little note going around where they are asking people to come out because, you know, the prime minister is going to do her budget speech and they're <laughs> saying, make sure enough are there because these concerned citizens might show up and you don't want their numbers bigger than than our numbers, meaning the BLP. The thing about this, what I want people <laughs> to understand, that these people that you're calling the concerned citizens, they are made up of both BLP and DLP people. Correct, not, correct. This is not a DLP thing, because they nope. said the Dems and the concerned citizens. Hold a minute, hold a minute. All of us, we, we it is a group of people, and we we are made up of B, Bs. They are Ds. They are Qs. They are Rs. And that is what you what you all don't understand. The people who 
are you know trying to muzzle you you really don't understand what is going on people don't even realize mr cherry was able to come on the show and say listen i am a blp i voted for the last administration but i have some challenges and he's able to come on this show and make that known and that and that is what i'm that is what i'm what they're afraid of that's it and we want you we want to remind you that we're not we're not a bunch of, as you call us, all the names in the book that we are called. <laughs> we are law-abiding citizens of Barbados who will continue to speak. And we need this message to go out. There will be no muzzling of anyone. That's right. We That's right. Continue to speak. Yes. And, and you know, the funny thing, Marcia, is that they think they're only dealing with three or four people on this show. <laughs> <laughs> you know that? I mean, I, I am looking even now. We, we are at 28 minutes to 8, and we already have 757 people on this show. You know, they think they're dealing with Marcia Weeks and Ferdinand Nichols and Caswell Franklin and Maxine McLean. And No, you're dealing with hundreds of Barbadian citizens who are not prepared to tolerate the nonsense and foolishness anymore. And as I mentioned, you know, um, when you were speaking just now of Mr. Cherry, um, uh, Marcia, I thought to myself, imagine that he had to come on this show to have his voice heard by the government. Imagine that. Imagine that in order for him to get, a, to get as it were, the attention he needed, he has to come on an environment totally different to dealing with government. And that's why I'm saying that government, if government had any sense, it would embrace the criticisms of its citizens and not try to shut it down because it is through criticism that you are able to determine if what you are planning or what you're doing is actually accomplishing what you're trying to do. I Correct. mean, I, I, I lead a church and, and I've led, I've been involved in church leadership for years. And one of the things I've observed is that, you know, when you listen to people who are critical of the ministry, what you do, and I, and, and I used to say it to my wife, and my wife used to say it to me, anytime I criticize you, if it isn't of value, just dump it. But if it is, you right. better pay attention to it, you know? And, and, and so I've grown with that. And, you know, there were people who, uh, when I did the worship services at the cathedral, you know, they wanted, they didn't think I did enough hymns. They felt that the hymns were, you know, filled with theology and so on. And I really wasn't doing a lot of the hymns. And I mm -hmm. thought, you know, that's not a bad idea. Let's try. And, and my goodness, it just exploded, you know. So it's good criticism and, and constructive criticism I'm talking about. I'm not talking about foolishness now. I'm right. talking about constructive criticism such as what is aired on a weekly basis on this show is something that the government ought to be paying attention to and yeah. listening. You know what I'm saying? You know, the, the book that we, um, I just want to remind people, I don't know if we have that that we can put up again. Um, if uh, Dave has it, it's uh, Dying Colonialism. Um, and that book, I want to encourage everybody to read it. There is a chapter there um, that uh, the name of it is, This is the Voice of Algeria. And in that chapter, you will um, read of how the radio, the use of the radio, you know, how that really, really um, impacted on, on the Algerians and, and that revolution mm -hmm. that, they, that they experienced in Algeria. The radio mm -hmm. and how that radio really is um, synonymous with this show, this type of show, uh, you know, and, and, and how it worked in Algeria to bring that kind of education to Algerians that, that caused them to be victorious in the revolution. And, and, and dictators know that. They understand the power of a vehicle like this of a medium like this and so that is why they would try to stop it because they understand that you know and so a dying colonialism franz fanon listen this is our reading for the month of march all right this is the reading it's our this is our book club for want of a better um, name um you know because we don't need to read but i would love for everybody to um get this book uh, whether I believe you can get it um, online. There's actually a free PDF copy online 
that people can get and to read this book i think it's going to be important and this the chapter is this is the voice of algeria if anybody who's reading it um who has it already can can tell me the chapter of the book um please um let me let me so i can i can i can remember the chapter um that particular chapter and i you know it's uh, i have it online so i can search for my phone um for it because I, somebody saw me on the phone and told me that it doesn't look good that i'm on the phone but i do have my notes on the phone as well so yeah, but I, that, I, that's I okay that's that's yeah, okay not not the here. viewers i mean that yeah, they, they okay. that matters their comments matter yeah. i think i see that's mr okay. franklin there um getting ready he's wiping his mouth <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling well, you know we are we but um but you know um folks uh i want to say i want to say that um just as mr franklin is coming getting ready to come in do not let anybody stifle your voice do not let anybody put a hand over your mouth and you know try to tell you you can't speak you shouldn't speak don't allow that don't allow that put your feet flat on the ground square your shoulders look them in the eye and say what you need to say and make sure that it's truth say your some, sorry you know marcia that's something that i must tell you you know uh, coming up through school from from our primary school days because one of the things i observed in, in my life and business. And in, of course, you know, I was a, in, involved in sales and marketing for the majority of my business life. Uh, I still am involved in business and sales and marketing to this day. But one of the things that I observe, you know, is, is how workers can't look management in the eye and, and speak. And, and inevitably, um, I got that boldness because I came to the place where it didn't matter to me whether you fired me or not. I kept respectful, but I always made sure that you never had such control over me that if I had to oppose you for one reason or the other, and you looked at me and said, I was fired, that my life would come to an end. Because you're not going to stop me from speaking my mind. Of course, not all of it, because a fool is the person that does that. And, and not speaking the truth. And, yeah. and I think it's important for people to know that. It's good to see you, Mr. Franklin, Mr. Caswell Franklin. I, I hear Marcia often refer to you as the general. And I would imagine the reason she does so is because you have an army that is uh, is is dealing with some matters of, of, of a war, so to speak. <laughs> Welcome, sir. Good to have you on with us tonight. Yes, thank you very much for having me again tonight. I, if you don't take me, I will, my days will not be complete. You so, can say uh, that again. So I am here at your service once again. But um, I want to talk about that item that you were talking about just in Marcia, the, 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 the um, WhatsApp post that went around. This is called Manufactured Affection. Okay, well, let's clarify what, what it is. Do you want me to do you want me to read it? Yeah, you can. You please do. Okay. So let me let me just go through my phone um right now and 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 find and find um and find it because I think I think you actually sent it. I think yeah. a lot of people were sending it to me. Right? And um <laughs> that, that this is what this is what they this is what they do, okay? So it says, good morning, budget day in Barbados is on Monday, March 18th at 3 p.m. On this occasion, Prime Minister Honorable Mia Amor Motley will deliver the budget speech. Wow, she's going to be in Barbados, people. National Council you, reps you are expected to work with their constituency assistance to mobilize no less than 25 people to gather outside Parliament by 2.15 p.m. next Monday. Please expect a call from my headquarters requesting more information on people being mobilized. We now, have a, we now have an opposition leader and our numbers at parliament must be more than the Dems. 
let us show our support to our prime minister and other parliamentary representatives for the work being done and then they started to list wow. the work so that means you know they are reminding uh, um, they, they have to remind you of what they've done because looking of around job. Job. yeah but this is a part right they, they said in short this, the constituencies also have to be present in full force on tuesday when Ralph, Ralph replies to the budget, ensure that they are early to be in the queue for the public gallery and that they outnumber the concerned citizens. <laughs> that they outnumber the concerned uh. citizens. And then who will use the opportunity to have a show of force outside the parliament. We must be in the majority. This will be to welcome our ministers who will take center stage immediately after Ralph speaks. Over to you, Mr. Franklin. <laughs> what I, I call that manufactured affection, manufactured okay. love. You okay. see, when politicians do this, right? People say, oh, Mayor Motley is really um, a popular. This is not popular. This is, this is, right now she's asking for 750 people. To come for each constituency and have um, 25 people, right? You know how much people they want to bring out there, and they have, and they, and and this is not spontaneous as it was with Ralph, because I can assure you that Ralph had nothing to do That's with right. the greetings that he had outside of Parliament. I can That's assure right. you of that. It was right. it was it, it came from the people. Me being one of the people, because so I so so I know how that happened so i can tell you that it was not something that was but ralph but i think he was even surprised by the people who wrote there but what what they are doing now i see and when you see all those people like i say you see how people love me yeah? no they are being instructed to come out there and be nuisances because one they're going to stop people who are really interested from seeing it they're going there they want they don't want to watch you know this is the same thing to do on the calling programs they tell the people they're fools to call in and occupy the radio station, talk about anything. As long if you're on, them they can't be on too. So occupy the radio waves. No, the same principle involved in this of this manufactured affection that they're trying to do for Molly. She is not as popular as people be, that, that they portray, because people see the crowds and they follow the, they follow pattern. But they are instructed to do this. I know how it is done. I used to do it too. So I am, I, I am not going to play it ignorant. But I just want the public to be aware that this is nothing spontaneous. It is going to be um, a stage pro it is, it's a stage managed process. You're going to have people hug up. You're going to know who to go hug up who. Who can pick the lapel on whose uh, thing, on the, the, car, the um, buttonhole on, or whatever, on your lapel or whatever else. They have all of that arranged. This is not a spontaneous movement. There and and the way they had to do it this way, because the people, their own people, are not out there in support of them because their own people are suffering. So they want to bring the diehards. Bring the diehards and come. That's right. That's right. So I, I, I remember telling you a guy come to my office one day and normally I would have a little few things I can give people. And I was so angry when he came there. He told me, well, he ain't got nothing in the house to eat. And if we can help you with something, because somebody told him that he got things down there. And I asked him politely, or not so politely, to leave my office because he was wearing a t-shirt marked Mayor Cares. I said, go to who care about you. You know, if you if you out there advertising her, and you got to be out here begging, something is wrong. So he, he that same man might be out there in the crowd, you know, because he's looking to be seen so that they might to, to get attention so as to mm -hmm. get somebody to see one of the ministers who will only notice him on that day you know and and they're not they're not thinking you put me to suffer for five years and ever so often at budget time a few come out and you cheer them on and you feel good again no they are supposed to be here governing for the best interest of all Barbadians, but particularly, particularly the most vulnerable. The, you're not going to see 
any of those merchants out there stand up and sharing them a job they bring they bring in they're going to bring people who are basically mindless who don't think for themselves you know and, and then i say oh we're so popular and and you're going to you want to occupy this space because they don't want the dems you don't want the the concerned citizens why don't you want concerned citizens to listen to the budget exactly, uh, um, exactly. well that should be your goal not to crowd out the thing I, so i am suspicious now that they're going to do some nastiness in the budget because if they want credit down as much as possible that is the, the, the thing but let me explain to people now what the budget is and what this process is the real budget is the estimates that that tells you how much money the government intends to spend and how much money there are um, expecting to receive the income so they're estimating it the difference between the two now if you have you're going to, you expect to get less money than you plan to spend that is where this budget comes in this budget this this stock we call by um budget is really a ministerial statement that is not debated in the house you do not debate the budget what they do because when the prime minister or the minister of finance makes a budgetary proposal that proposal if it says you're going to be taxed from midnight tonight that is the law and the tax is effective from midnight tonight don't care the, res the response that you're going to hear the following day that is not going to change anything the law is that the, the minister needs this money and the minister will make this, these statements in accordance with the provisional collection of taxes act which tells you that the minister can raise this tax for three months before going to parliament to, to uh, pass the necessary legislation if they don't pass the necessary legislation according to the law they have to give back the money but they don't do that they break the law and talk about they're doing a validation that validation is unconstitutional because you would then be taxing people in retrospect and you and that is illegal so you have to pass that that measure within the 90 day period that the legislation allows the debate however is a debate congratulating the government on its stewardship and then you once you introduce that resolution then you can debate the re that resolution but it's what it is so when you hear the budget pass a budget don't pass a budget it becomes the law immediately as it comes from the word of the, the, the minister's mouth or a, a time when the minister decides when it will come into effect so as she was say from December this will happen or for whatever month it will happen then that is the law if or she says from tonight midnight tonight that is the law and the tax comes into force then the budget is only used according to the law to raise taxes or, est or, or um, create a new tax right you can you can um, raise the rate of a tax or you can implement a new tax in this way for instance in the budget in the budget you do not have the power to lower a tax my job have seen it done but they don't have the authority to do that but when they bend the lower the tax i am not foolish enough to go and tell the government oh you know you don't got the power to lower the tax i leave them so the people get a little break but that comes because people do not know their craft you go in the house and just you go in there to, to get your pension you don't learn the rules and as a result you hear oh this thing will come down you can't do that in your budget a budget is an emergency measure to get to fill that gap between revenue and expenditure that's all the budget is the provisional collection of taxes act that is where the budget and, and it doesn't have to be done in march or april it can be done at any time during the year That's if correct. the government sees a shortfall and they need to fix it quickly a budgetary proposal that's what is what but so and and it and it cannot and it, and it cannot be debated because it is it is in the form of a ministerial statement ministerial statements are not debated in parliament not in this jurisdiction as i said to you 
what is debated is a resolution that the after the budget speech somebody will get up and move a resolution congratulating the government and that is what is debated so it's not something that you pass and say well the budget is passed no there's not there's no passing a budget a budget is never passed a budget becomes law immediately when the minister says so i hope that and it, and it's, so something you might be time when Barrow didn't have any reason to raise the taxes he still had something to call it a fireside chat they didn't raise any taxes because he didn't the expenditure was not going to be exceeding the the income so there was no need to raise taxes because that's all the budget is to raise taxes somebody says given the prime minister's persistent absence from parliament and barbara can she be accused of dereliction of duty and forced to resign or oh, you she can be accused of dereliction of duty because i've done that so many times but it, she will not nobody can force her to resign but the mps in part in, in the house of assembly and under the rules of the house of assembly in order to take uh, the um prime minister out of office you have to have a resolution a no confidence motion that no confidence motion has to have the backing of two-thirds so that the prime minister be fired immediately yep. if you get a majority but not two-thirds then the prime minister has three days in which to resign or call an election and that's what sandiford did when he um in 1994 when there was a resolution against him the resolution was passed but not by the two-thirds so as a result sandiford then um dissolved parliament and called new elections he could have said well okay i'm stepping down and let somebody else do it but it is not uh, there's no way in our constitution to force a prime minister the only way to do that is to strike and stop working till she till she's gone you know because nobody can make you work you know if you if we, the people of Barbados are angry enough and fed up enough they can withdraw their labor and say we are working till she's gone something has to give and they can't bring in everybody from overseas like they did with the nurses because i am still disgusted by that behavior because they brought nurses that were not qualified to work in Barbados and put them to work in Barbados. I know we got some of them out here one beat Belgian nurses. And they had to call the police for, for um for one of them here last week. And the and the nurse who called the the, the, the police with the Ghanaian nurse who wanted to be there, now that she is in trouble because she called the police. You can't you you can't you can't make this thing up. So I tell them, well, go ahead do what you want to do because you can't stop me from calling the police if somebody assaults me i have a right to call the police the only way you will not be able to call the police for a person in in the man in the hospital okay. is if that person was a patient then you got to go through a different process yeah because some of these patients might have dementia or whatever so you just can't go and call the police because that's the risk you take but if a person of sound mind and memory can assault you Nobody can't tell you, you can't call the police. You, you can call the police anywhere in Barbados and the police will come. You remember the time when the police went to the um gated community and the yeah. people were like they made the police jump over. You know, I would have I wouldn't lock down the gate, but they they jump over because you can't stop the police from coming anywhere in Barbados. Once a crime is committed, the police must go a few. So that is a crime. So I tell the people in the Ministry of Health, back off. Because they don't really want me to go down that road with them. And I'm talking about geriatric hospital. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the things that are happening the things that are, are happening in this country mr caswell franklin and this is why this show is feared mr franklin because of what is happening look at the education that just happened a while ago when yes. you were speaking to barbadians about um the budget and what i mean who sit down and talk to Barbadians uh, about these kinds of things. And this, Mr. Franklin, is, is the kind of thing 
that happens on the show and why people log on. How many of you learned something a while ago from Mr. Franklin about the budget? I know I did. <laughs> I know I did. Yeah. And 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 look at the look at the revelations that that are coming forth um, from Mr. Franklin from Kimar Stewart about um, you know the whole project Mr. Franklin so many things with Mr. Franklin but the most recent thing about the land tax look at those kinds of things and they expect us to be muzzled absolutely not absolutely not we're gonna talk our our talk you know. Um, yeah, we're gonna talk for a talk. Yes, Marcia. Marcia um, I just for interest and and muzzling me, they told me that the, doc, the the midwife didn't have to slap me. I was bawling, so they stick my head out. So I, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so then they then shot me. I think I'll be bawling to the end. If they want to do something, well, that's their business. And if they want to put something up my tail, let them try. Yeah, um, you know, go, go oh, ahead. You were saying something, Mr. Um, Dr. Ferdinand. No, go right no I'm, I'm, I'm equally like yourself. You know, um, I've been around the political uh, arena for a while, but a lot of things, you know, you don't pay attention to as you're growing up. Young people really don't pay a lot of attention to that, and so it's really encouraging to hear uh, Caswell taking the time. And you know, this is the thing, Marcia, that it would be so, it would be so fitting. If when government hears a criticism of something, you sit down with the people and you explain things to them like what we've just heard. You talk with them and you take their questions. You take their concerns. I find it really that that message going around Caswell um, about, about having more people there than the DLP and the concerned citizens. What, what, pardon the expression, what idiot wrote that? Because the concerned citizens of Barbados would be people from all walks of life, all political parties, all religious backgrounds. I mean, you, you can't ignore these people because these are the people that are going to vote in the next election. The people that vote are not just all BLP. Yeah. They're the citizens of Barbados. You, 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 you see, that's the problem. That is the problem with the Democratic Labour Party. The Democratic Labour Party has a more, more mature, discerning um, supporter. They decide if they're candidate, they don't like their candidate, they're voting for them. And that's what happened in the last election and the one before that. But the Dems, if you bring a three-foot dog, they will, their supporters will vote for it. And they will say, it's the best dog we ever had. Mm -hmm. That is the difference between the Democratic Labour Party and the Barbers, there were party people vote for whatever you put there. You know, like for instance, we had a, the, the guy um, who, was, uh, who just deposed as deputy speaker. He, he can barely read, but he got enough votes. Why? Right? Because he got the BLP votes. And when you look and see, the last election was the lowest poll ever in the history of Barbados. Correct. Correct. And yet, still, but they but. But you see, they got their numbers because they got 31% of, of, of the people that, um, the electorate, right? Now, the people that voted. But that is their numbers, you know. They ain't got no more. So if the other people had come out and voted against them for one particular candidate, they would have been beaten in almost every constituency. But the Dems didn't turn out. And I, I have a message for the Dems. Stop playing the full stop shooting yourselves in the foot you know you need to be you need to i look since we are sending soldiers to haiti let me do this in our military terms the enemy is in front of you not behind you so when you when you are firing at the enemy you do not need somebody behind you firing at you i, ho I hope that i hope that is enough said friendly fire yeah friendly but it is not friendly they're not they're not friendly <laughs> with each other and that's the problem husband and wife just have noise but they don't want to tell everybody you have you have this that you have the, um disagreements in your household but do you go and tell the neighbors you know that foolish woman they're telling me nonsense and i don't want her and, and talk and talk all your business no you don't do that you settle it at the table correct and then you go and kiss up and make up and do whatever other thing you can do if you're able to do that you know but 
Notwithstanding that, you don't pray. And that, that's what the Dems have to learn. I saw some, I'm not going to try to highlight it anymore because I think that was enough. But I want to get back to the budget thing. The, yes, the Provisional Collection of Taxes Act. Chapter 85 of the Laws of Barbados for those people who would want to check for themselves. It's a very short piece of legislation and it, it what it does it section one just out in the name of the act two says for the purposes of this act the expression budgetary proposal means any proposal made to the house of assembly by or on behalf of the minister of responsible finance for the purpose of raising revenue to meet public expenditure then they tell you what an existing tax is and then they tell what and then they define tax tax includes all assessments charges duties fees rates and positions or other levies however called so anything that you raise in the, in the budget is it is a tax right and then it tells you taxes this is, is um section three you now that says taxes effective from the debt specified in the by the minister in the budgetary proposal and it tells you that so it says subject to this act the imp, the imposition of a tax or b the increase of an rate of an existing tax is contained in any budgetary proposals then from the debt specified by the minister in the in such budgetary proposals here referred to here and after and this act referred to as the specified date and then it tells you when the dates were going to be effective okay. then it says here on section four bills imposing taxes or increasing existing tax without prejudice to the generality of section three where there is introduced into the house of assembly any bill providing for the imposition of a tax or an increase in the rate of an existing tax then subject to subsection two such rate or increase in the rate of existing tax shall be payable with effect from the date specified in the bill or if no such date is specified from the date which on which the bill is introduced into the house of assembly and it's and i said three months but it's four As any tax or increase in the rate of existing tax which becomes payable pursuant to subsection one shall cease to be payable if the bill is withdrawn from the House of Assembly, A or B, is not passed by the House of Assembly within four months of the date on which it is, is, is introduced therein. What that means is that if a budget proposal comes up, the Prime Minister says, okay, from midnight tonight, this tax goes up. If they don't bring legislation to put that tax in place, that tax lapses after four months. And it says in section five, if pursuant to subsection two and three, or subsection two of the of subsection or section four, any tax or increase in the rate of existing tax ceases to be payable, then the sums paid by any person by way of such tax or increase in rate of tax of an existing tax shall be refunded to that person. So that means that if they don't pass the legislation, you gotta pay back the tax. But the government comes up with this device that is con that is completely contrary to the law and say oh we are validating the um the, the tax meaning that what they did they did it incorrectly and they were and they know i'm saying well even though we did it wrong it is now valid you can only do that if you amend the constitution because a tax takes away your money and you cannot take away your money in retrospect so if there is no legislation passed you can't come later on and pass the legislation after the, the fact and then say it goes back to next year or last year or whatever else no that is wrong it is illegal but we we sit down and we take it and because it happens so much everybody talks about a validation bill there's no there's no such thing our constitution don't provide for it once it's dealing with money you you can't do that because money is property and if you're going to take away people's property then you have to go through a process of passing the correct law to do so and if you don't do so you're going to give back the people the money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wow 
that, 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 is, that, is the, that is the act that informs the budget. It has nothing to do with all these fancy speeches we're here tomorrow. Or, or not tomorrow, um, the 19th. Oh, on, on, on the 18th. On the, on the 18th. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's quite interesting. You know, um, we're going to talk a bit more about this when um, Ms. McLean comes on. But um, we, had an, uh, we had a suggestion, actually, from um, Glyde Murray, one of our panelists, and he's suggesting that members of the public submit a list of three measures or policy items for inclusion or exclusion for the budget. So we want uh, Mr. Franklin just explain to you about the budget. And so um, um, he's asking uh, members of the public, he said it's a suggestion. I think it's a great suggestion, Mr. Franklin for people to um, submit, you know, and, and and the whole thing is to get involved, is, is getting ourselves involved in the process. At least cause us to think, and then to just no, sit down and no. just, you know. Yeah. Why I don't think it's such a good idea is because you were, a budget is about raising taxes. You're asking people to submit suggestions to raise taxes. That's what the budget is, you know. Don't, yeah, all this, all this fancy here. things, all these fancy things that we're doing about a budget is supposed to raise taxes or in raise, uh, uh, create a, a new tax or a, uh, increase an um, existing tax. That's what a budget is designed for, the law says. Now, um, if you want to have measures where you lower taxes and stuff, that's not a budget. That is not, that is not part of the, what a budget is designed to do. If you want lower tax, you pass in the necessary legislation and you lower the tax. But you can't do it in a budget. So I, I you know, th this might sound um, intriguing and stuff. I'm excited, but it, 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 it doesn't help. The, and it doesn't help the education of the people for people to understand how government works. Yeah, I, I'm trying to see what um, what it is that Mr. Mr. Murray was, was saying. Um, I think I, I think though that even if it is um, to raise taxes, at least it is something that the, the exercise might, it could possibly cause people to be involved in the process. Yes, as I agree with you, as, as, as you've been explaining, it is to, yes, you're raising taxes, um, but you know, it is something to sit down, at least the exercise might cause you, it might just cause you to, you know, those who want to do it, it might just cause you to at least put some, thought to it because usually you hear oh the budget you just sit there as a lamb to the slaughter you know but to sit down and probably um figure out you know what are some of the possible um policies or measures that could be included um you might if you're into that kind of thing you know it, it just might um stir somebody's uh, curiosity or knowledge or their you know um enlightenment i, I don't know um, I'd, pr I'd, pref I'd prefer a movement rather than try to um, tell government what to put in the budget. I would prefer a movement that tried to tell government to go, <laughs> which, is, which, which would be a much better exercise and, and show them why they shouldn't stay in office because we can't trust them. And, list and, and, and to list all of those things that would cause me not to want to vote for you. Those, that would be a more useful exercise because then they will see the people's um, true feelings about them. Because I can tell you, I, I don't want to um, be in this uh, place, Barbados, being governed by these people for, for another minute. But unfortunately, I can't do anything about it. So I have to, I have to grin and bear it. It is as simple as that. I would prefer the people to be saying to them, look, go. Don't co go. Don't collect $200. Don't go past. Go. Just go. You know, <laughs> you know. It would be like today. I I I heard Freddie speaking earlier about um they're admitting that they made a mistake with the hospital. I told them so in the Senate back then, but the bottom one here because you had a BLP person that needed a job that they weren't qualified for, so you got passed that's just to qualify them for something. You know, and 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 that is unfortunate. The only reason they're doing this now that they cannot find a, a yard foul to put in there, you know. Well, you know, I, I listened to the debate today, uh, Caswell, and uh, from what I heard, um, oh dear, I can't recall her name now. Um, I'm having some difficulty with these names. A fine young lady 
uh, the government government senator um, speaking concerning the the applications for the CEO of the hospital, and she said that they only received two out of eighty five or eighty seven I think applications. She said they only received two from Barbados, uh, which means they would have received the other the balances from overseas. Um, I don't know the accuracy of the statement or otherwise um, with regards to that. But what I did hear them say quite clearly uh, and admit to was that there was, a, a, and I would say it in my term, there was an error in moving from the position of CEO to um, executive director, I think is what it is, if my, if my mind serves me correctly. My executive so, chairman. Uh, executive chairman, thank you. And now you're going back to the CEO again. Uh, which means that they have not thought things through. And this seems to be the problem. You know, you mentioned something. You mentioned a word just now that I don't know if people have caught it. And it's that word trust. It's that word trust. Throughout the entire pandemic, we have lived to see that what we were told throughout the pandemic was a blatant lie. And let's be clear on the matter. It is a blatant lie. We're not talking about the 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 issue of the of the disease we're talking about the issue of the treatments and it was a blatant lie we saw governments around the world play into the hands of the pharmaceutical industry with regards to that and as a result now that people are more than aware of all that has gone on they do not trust the government and the same is here in barbados everywhere i turn people tell me the same thing i don't trust these people i don't trust these people that's the number one thing i'm hearing all of the time and I, you know, I, I said it a little earlier. If you want to govern well, pay attention to your critic, critic, uh, critics, sorry. Pay attention to what they're saying. If what they're saying has no value, dump it. If what they're saying has virtue, you better pay attention to it. And clearly, on the basis of what we have been able to establish on this show, I mean, Marcy, you spoke about the number of things we have spoken and, and exposed and spoken of on this show that have either been pulled back, sent back to, to committee, or something of the sort. And clearly, our, our presenters that are coming on the show are coming on with facts, they're coming on with truth. I listened to the young Kimar on more than one occasion come out with facts, facts to do with the sewage, with the sewage issue in Barbados, facts to do with what he calls it, again, the jobby water, I think is, how, is what he calls it, you know, facts to do with the housing issue up in St. John, facts to do with the, the, the housing construction aspect that we are looking to in Ch with the Chinese. All of these are facts. Maxine came out with additional facts as well relative to tourism and other areas and i listened carefully to what she was saying and this is the issue that we have barbadians simply don't trust and you know and, and i will tell you something caswell trust is one factor that when it is violated is extremely difficult to rebuild very very difficult to rebuild oh. Uh, uh, I, I, there's a, there's a question um on the on the screen mm -hmm. um ooh, somebody okay the, the question was about it was just there um on the screen that i wanted you to uh they were asking if it was there a waste of time for the chamber of commerce um to have submitted their proposals to the government because i heard um Patricia tanis saying that they have just uh you know that they so what, what about that process the person was asking someone is asking that. that is pre that is pre budget the budget is already written just waiting to be read mm -hmm. the government did not consult with the, anybody to ask them what you want in the budget mm -hmm. That's right. but the people who matter to them the chamber of commerce the people that got money that is what this is all about you know you ask the merchants and the people who can give campaign contributions I didn't say them here and say to anybody out there with the unions or anybody else. Um, could you suggest to us any budgetary measures that you want? No, they meant the Chamber of Commerce. And the Chamber of Commerce, they're always invited to make put their um the mind you they might not get everything they're asking for, but they're gonna get more than us because we are not given the opportunity to make any suggestions. So I, I, I'm not going to make suggestions after the fact when everything is written, only they're ready to be read. The, the, this, the, the, the budget is, and mind you, this, this budget now is not written in Barbados. This budget is written in Washington. IMF, this IMF budget. 
So a lot of things that the, that the government might want to do, they can't do because they're going to get in bed with the devil. You know what I mean? So when you get compromised like that, it is, it is done. And, and, and all because of their sheer incompetence and want to air up their friends with 54 million Barbados dollars talking about white oak that nobody never heard of before. And they do it and they do it so quickly that they didn't give themselves a chance to check and see how much money Treasury got in. They, they had people in place waiting to rip off Barbados. So they, they, they give you that an opportunity. So it is an absolute waste of time now after the fact to come and tell me this is what I would like the government to do. And, when, and the thing is what the Chamber of Commerce and some other people have done over the years is to make recommendations to lower taxes. That is not a budgetary measure. A, bu a budget is only about closing that gap between expenditure and income where expenditure is more than what the income uh, is projected to be. Right. So you are, you, you are, see, because if you wait to do legislation, the legislation should go to the House normally and it's laid in the, it, first of all, you got to get it drafted, it got to go to the Chief Parliamentary Council, they got to go back to, they can start, start the ministry, the ministry going to then get instructions from the minister, from the cabinet, then cabinet can say, yes, we can do this, and that can take a while. Let's say that can take three months. That's three months in taxes that you are not going to get. So the taxes is going to be higher. Then you finally do it in three months. So if you do it and spread it over the entire year, then you don't have to pay so much one time. So it is it is in the best interest to raise the taxes immediately rather than go through the normal parliamentary process. That was all about. But they get their, their friends to tell them what they want. And yeah. even now with the, with the MF budget, the um the yeah, MF still more interested in the in um corporate Barbados because that is what the MF wants to hear from. Who what, who they want to hear from? They want to hear from us. And you the big know. joke is when you when when the, when the MF did want to hear from you, the ten union people, some union people went there and they were not um well brief, so they went talk a lot of foolish at the MF meetings. You know, Mr. Franklin, thanks for that um, clarification. Um, but I, I want to, um, Mr. Brown, Alvin Brown, good night, sir. It's good to have you on the program. And this is a beautiful um, example of the fact that on this show, we have people of different persuasion. And so Alvin has put his comment up. And Alvin says, um, did you all trust the DLP when they were in office? Mr. Franklin, did you all trust Owen when he was there? Did you all trust David when he was there? Did you all trust Fumble when he was there? And I want you to, I, I want to, I want to um, focus on that last line in that comment, um, Mr. Brown, because I've seen you and others, you get really upset when the Prime Minister is called names on this program. In fact, some of you lose it and you yourselves become disrespectful if people begin to speak about the prime minister look at what you have called um the honorable prime minister um frontal steward look at the name and because that's the name that your prime minister um that um honorable um mia motley and her crew that's the name that they gave him so when people call her dictator mia motley a dictator when people call her a bully, when when people call her an airhead, when people call her a nomad traveling all around the world, why is it that you guys get out of control? Huh? Look at what look at the name that you have called um the, the um Miss Mrs. Stewart or whatever reason you have. The people who call me a madly a dictator and a bully, right? And all of those names, they have, they might have experienced her in that way. But it's interesting that you would write fumble, and nothing is wrong with it. That's why it's up on the screen. But I want to, I want to use the opportunity to bring this to your attention. All right. I, I thought that was important. Mr. Now, I could, I could, I could answer that for him. Did you all trust the DLP when when they were in office, Mr. Franklin? The answer to that was yes, and then when they betrayed my trust, I pull it. I took it from them. 
Same thing with Owen Arthur. Owen Arthur was going along quite well, and then he became um, arrogant. And I, I supported Owen Arthur until he became arrogant. Um, but he took um, two terms to become that way. But almost two terms. So the, I don't think he should have gotten the third term because he became very arrogant back then and he, the power went to his head. And if I supported Mayor Motley, I supported her for the two weeks that she behaved. You know, and so, you know, I trust her for those two weeks. I, I, I trust you first. I'm not going to give you my trust blindly because I like you. You know, I have a friend who is not one of the most honest people in the world, but he's my friend. Do I trust him to um think if you base anything where want to get from? You know? But he's my friend. He's been my friend for ten with little boys. But I would not commend him to you to um take your money to the bank. You see, so it is the same thing. I give you my trust. I expect you to um, honor it and do nothing to betray that trust. When you betray that trust, as Freddie said just now, it is very hard to regain that. Exactly. You know, I, I look, like, you know, I, 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 I find it hard to trust you again. Exactly. And for the two weeks that Mia was trustworthy, um, but no, she's not trustworthy anymore. She has not been telling the truth. She comes to us. I'll give you some examples. She came to us during the pandemic and said things that we know that we know know that were not true. That's right. That's right. And how and and and, and it was convenient. That's right. And and I heard Biden out there saying, "Oh, if you check, get um seventy percent of the person's jobs, we will we have a fund that will give you money." And they, and the government was crying, oh, "We want seventy percent. We want seventy percent." So I draw, I drew the conclusion, reasonably so, that the government was trying to get 70% because they wanted some of that money that Biden was talking about, not in the best interest of Barbadians. We took some of those jobs from India and used them before India used them. I don't trust you after that. There I will never trust you after that. You when, uh, and then when they tried to give some of them to Dr. Um, Trinidad World, they said, mm -mm, you hold them, boy. Let me... Let me let me see how that work first. And you you use me as a guinea pig. And they want me to trust you again. I don't if I want to go into a trial, I will make a conscious decision to do so. I will not de be deceived into doing so. And then the person or persons who deceive me, they come and say, You know you can trust me. Stick your arm out for something else. I don't even know if you can drop a hundred dollars because I'm not sticking up my hand. Not to you again. So Alvin, I am very sorry. If you it hurts you because your party is being criticized, don't 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 um look at what the message is. Don't um just get vexed because somebody's saying that they, they, they're not trustworthy. They are not. And if and if the Dems were doing what they are doing now, you will not trust the Dems. So what what makes it different with them? With the Bible Stable Party, because you might like them or you might be a supporter. Think for yourself. You got the same eight ounces of grandmother. Um, except for me, I got a big head, so I might got eleven. But um, <laughs> you got you got the same eight ounces of grandma as anybody else. Use it. Don't let anybody tell you. Think for yourself. Yeah, I agree with you, Caso. I absolutely agree with you. That's the biggest problem we have in politics in Barbados. It's the biggest problem we have in 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 the context of our uh, political parties. People are blind followers. They just go along with anything that they're told, any, every, any and everything they're told. They don't research. They don't do their, their due diligence. They don't follow through in terms of because the minister says so, that is accurate. Well, the, there are a number of things I heard today that were absolutely inaccurate. Um, and, I, and I checked with a couple of persons uh, with, what I, uh, you know, with what I heard concerning the QEH and, and um, persons told me that is not true. Uh, there, there are people working there who can tell me that is not true. You know, so what you've done really, and, and you're asking about if we trusted this body, if we trusted that body. Yes, we did. But when they violated that trust, they no longer qualify to have that trust. And it has been difficult for them to rebuild that trust. And it is the same thing in this context. What has happened is that the pandemic has augmented, magnified 
the violation of that trust, especially when persons discovered that at the end of the day, it was what was being done was not following science and was not following what the experts were saying. They had convenient experts that said what they wanted to say. They had the media that supported that. They had the pharmaceutical industry that supported that. And they had governments that supported what the World Health Organization said, even though there were persons who were consultants with the WHO that told the WHO that what they were doing was incorrect. We could have saved the lives of millions of people had the WHO released persons to be treated in a number of different ways other than what they were being paid by the pharmaceutical industry to promote. And this, I am not talking stuff that I don't know. I know this. This is fact that we have been able to establish. And, and our, our government went along with it. Didn't ask a single question of anybody. At least I don't know if they asked any question. Maybe they had a gun to their head. I don't know. But that's the reality of it. You violated our trust. We don't trust you. Bottom line. Yeah. You know, so if, if those people came to me with a stack of $100 bills, I would say, hold on a minute. Let me put on my gloves. Because I won't trust them not even to give me money. <laughs> All right? As it's as simple as that, you know. Yeah. I will go, go and take it and put it in some Clorox or some sort of kill whatever they got on it before I touch it with my hands. I do not trust them. You know, you know, Mr. Franklin, and that is that is the that that's the issue here, really. And I, I, I want people um, in the comment section go ahead and write it right in the comment section because as as Mr. Franklin was listing up the things for him, why he stopped trusting this government. I was going over my yeah. my trust issues. <laughs> The stuff that, that, that caused me not to trust in, you know, going going over stuff in my mind. And so I'm going to ask you to write down that particular thing. You know that moment where it stopped for, for you. You know, you know exactly where that moment is. I remembered one of the big issues for me was that Good Friday. And Good Friday is coming up. What happened there in Deacons on Good Friday? I, 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 that had me, that is one of the reasons, you see, I take such a bold stance about this thing. Because, you know, you, you, you want to help the government, you want to work with them, you want, but when I realize, oh, hold a minute here, something is not right here. Something is not right here. So you are going to, um, you know, um, people can have your number, people are known to the police can have your, your number and they can call you and you, that sounded to me like um, the politics we used to practice in Jamaica years ago. And so the, from that moment, I knew something was wrong. I knew that, and it just went downhill for me. There are other people who will have their, their moments. I would love for you to do that. While you're doing that, Mr. Franklin, can you um, bring us up to date on what is happening at BRA? You know, we saw that a letter came out today. There was some. Can you explain what it is that they are saying? There's a there's a letter that came out today. No, I saw something in the paper. In the paper, um, it was CBC on Instagram, and then it was um, an article in the Nation, and they they are saying that their processes. The problem is that the pro the processes that they are talking about were bypassed. When the policy and planning section that deals with these things, they weren't even aware that Adrian, the guy who we call Adrian, that his um, that this was a policy coming through the things. Somebody at the lower level created that policy and and, and helped the friends and helped themselves and helped their colleagues who were close to them. I understand now that they they have identify the person to lead an, uh, um, an internal investigation. Now, could there? there are, th these are people who work together and been friends for years. And you're going to investigate your, your, your buddy who you go lunch with? Nah. You need, um, an in not, you don't need an internal investigation. You need a forensic audit by people from the outside. You, you, it, it, you do not investigate yourselves. You know, because if I have to investigate myself for wrongdoing, I'm going to come out saying, "Oh, I, he was perfect." You know, so that, that and so this 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 is just 
a measure of cover, covering up. And then they tell you the FB public knows about any wrongdoing. You know, they can, we can be whistleblowers. They don't ask how the whistleblower is. The whistleblowers are used for people like this are the staff who see things going wrong and complain about them. A young lady tell me I can call her name tonight. Because she called me today when this whole thing broke. Because she, she people were telling her what was going on. She was an employee there. She was a, And she was forced to resign because of the bad behavior. Inside there, her name is Sasha. And she was forced to resign and go and look for work. She told me she is not staying in there because she's not going to be tainted by their behavior. When, and, and she was an employee. This is long before I, I read this, this, these revelations. So, um, she, it was going on. She was working in the audit. She was a senior auditor. And she saw so many things that was going wrong. And she brought them to the attention of her superiors. And they made life difficult for her. Because there were certain things that she was not supposed to report on. At which point, she decided, well, I live in here. I can't take on this. And she resigned from after 20 some odd years in public service because of the bad behavior at Bra. Mm. And they made her life a living hell because she was doing what she was being paid to do. So, so you cannot now ask people at Bra to investigate each other when they don't want when they don't want hear from a person whose job it was to investigate it in the first place. There's an internal audit. The internal audit was so compromised that a young lady decided, well, look, I, I can't I can't work in there anymore, not under these conditions. And she left. She told me today I can call her name. Because I was going to mention it. She told me, No, you can call my name. She called me today. And she and she was happy wow. that some of these things are now coming out. But um if they had allowed her to do her work, they would have come up much sooner and they wouldn't be coming up by me. Bra is all of that. Bra, Bra has been created in iniquity. This organization was mm. not supposed to be the, the all encompassing body that it is. It was supposed to be. Um, going after the government's revenue when you didn't pay they were to be here to collect the arrears and from that small start people keep amending amending next thing you know they were taking over and running the institutions and, and you can take people from i know because you're all working in the same agency you can take people who have no knowledge in the area and put them to work in that area in another area because when you're at land tax you have specific training when you were at um and the revenue has a specific training, you know. So, but when you know, I mean, you're at licensing authority, you have specific training for design for those jobs. But now you can be given the duties of any people in, in those um in those areas, and they do. So, and, and and the people who are capable don't get the jobs. Right now, if you are a person who is to work at KPMG and you want a job. You can get it at Bra, because the Revenue Commissioner came from there, and she finds it convenient to hire her or her colleagues, her, her former colleagues from the APMG. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look, look, look and, and and then you got they go coming to get trained, and the government is and this thing is happening right under the nose of the government. Well, I suppose if you got a nose like mine and it's so big that you because under your nose you might not see it, but um. This is happening under their noses, and they're not. And and, and you bring your friends, the other commissioner, revenue commissioner, bring the families and all kind of stuff inside there. And then, when when there, this, there was some discovery of theft because the persons had familial um, connections, the matters went away. The police were not involved as required by law. And 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 then and and but initially they were involved, but then something happened in the back out. You know, so bra should never existed, not in this form. And all it is doing now is providing, is to robbing the government of its revenue. We will not have to have 
um, budgetary proposals to raise that billion dollars deficit that the government is looking for, it might have been a lot less had the people at Bra not been stealing and stealing for their friends. You imagine a person was paying taxes on the $2 million property. All right? And all of a sudden, he gets friends to lower it to a million dollars. The taxes now is going to be on a million dollars. So government lose out on that revenue. Oh, there, Marcia, as we speak, I'm getting so much um, things from Brad and funny, so much WhatsApp messages, you know. The one person want me to talk about um, a guy who was doing his job, but then he raised it. The, 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 um, he he, he uh, legitimately lowered the tax because he said, well, look, the, you tax people based on the best, the highest and best value of the property, what the body is used for. So if it is used as a residential property, but you've got a few um, carrots in the backyard, you're not, you're not agriculture, right? Just because you've got a few things like Sonia Brown, she says she got 25 chickens and two dogs or something like that. So this is not agriculture. It is, it, it, so she would not be paying the higher rate of tax. And a one young man, he did that for a fellow who, who didn't live in the house, but they got a little bit up on the side that got corn curls and a couple of things out there to sell to the school children in the past. And they classified it differently to where the person's taxes. And, and what they did, rather than just say, okay, well, we disagree with you, we can lower the tax. Back to what it was, uh, 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 um, we can raise that back to what it was supposed to be. They suspended him. Had him home for a year on full pay, trying to find charges against him because he was not one of their friends. There were two of them like that. And but one came to me and I said, sit down, relax, because it, it, he was so um, distraught and hurt and angry and everything else. And so under so much stress, he started getting strokes and going like, a few strokes every day, every day. That again, New York, or he would have died. This is what the, the pressure they put on people in at Bra because they wanted to put somebody in the job that he should have been getting. So in order to get him out of there, they've manufactured charges against him, or manufactured a scenario against him, suspended him on full pay pending the outcome of those investigations. And after a year, they could not find anything. Two individuals. And not a word of apology. And expect, well, one fellow now has ended his retirement papers, but the other fellow now is a young man, and they expect him not to go back and sit down among the same people that lied about him to try to get him dismissed, try to get him locked up, and they might got nothing else for you to do, you got to work there. I cannot work with them, to tell the truth, because I can't trust them. I can't, I, they, they, you know, when you're working with people, you, you expect them to have your back. Mm -hmm. But not when you put in two knives in my back, as it's time I turn my head, you put a knife on my back and I like one to you. No. This bra is too corrupt. It is too corrupt to investigate itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I put in um a, um a, 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 a team or a, a person to investigate their colleagues, their friends, who they should go lunch with, who went to their one other weddings and all kind of stuff, who was bread meal for somebody else. You can't you can't get a proper um investigation the investigation must come from outside and the thing is a lot of the things that i told you at bra about bra were already known by by senior officers like right and they did nothing about it even the officer who was supposed to be in charge of enforcement her property is lower as far lower than it should be by by, by more than 50 percent Wow. And and um so who gonna you she's so she's gonna enforce things against you? Yeah, yeah. You know <laughs> you, I can't believe that these people could be could have spent um Saturday and Sunday working you know, on a strategy to come up with this nonsense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Somebody just wrote to me and said that it should be emphasized that a fraudulent change to evaluation is starting out to theft of land taxes because the lesser value reduces the land tax that is lawfully due. 
this is not me that's saying that even though i agree but this is coming from somebody from bra yeah. you know it it, it 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 is um the, the bad behavior is too widespread and you don't know who else is involved you know you 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 have a lot of senior people involved but you don't know how many more of those senior people are involved so you can't ask them to, to investigate each other mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you know the, the thing is and this is why you know this is why they they um you know mr franklin they would do anything to muzzle this show muzzle me muzzle you muzzle, muzzle anybody who comes on the show because of these this kind of exposure you came on the show on i believe it was friday right and and spilled everything out on the show and and by today monday there was a there was a a, a, a kind of a press release right is that what you would call it a kind of like a press release from brock is it, am i am i mistaken was it like a press release in your well, I, I, well um it, it was a, a sub of release because i heard the lady speaking on cbc on instagram you know, the, the, the thing is now, they, they are playing catch-up. Right. But, and, and things right. That, that they should not have been playing catch-up with. Because okay, right now... I want, I want to say something about you and your boldness. And use it to speak to Barbadians. To say, listen, Mr. Franklin came on this program. He had all the documents. He had everything. And he, he risked it all. <laughs> you know, when he was talking like, oh, my Lord, Mr. Franklin all out tonight and he shared that information with us because it affected us there were people and, and there were so many persons who were sending me um you know information about their land tax and and the discrepancy in their bill and how it went up thousands of dollars he became a voice for those people and we want if you're watching here you're from the government this is what this show is doing being a voice of the voiceless and if that's what you have a problem with, there's a real, you have a real problem and we're going to deal with that at election time. Mm -hmm. Just know that. Because that. this show is carrying the, the concerns of the people of Barbados. And what, those who are watching from the government understand whether I am sitting in the seat or somebody else is sitting in the seat, this show will continue. You can't stop it. Go ahead, Mr. That. Frank. When it was the young man who did his job in accordance to what he his training, but he he probably offended somebody senior, they suspended him for a year pending investigation. All right? Well, it, the investigation should have taken a year, but they couldn't find anything wrong with the man's work, so they were looking, they were digging up things, going back looking to find something on him. I have given them enough information on certain people inside there. The body got suspended yet? Because those people should be suspended pending the outcome of the investigation. You cannot be in there sitting at your desk, being, having access to the computer to wipe out things that you would have inputted or whatever, and then deleting your trail and, and nobody knows that you. You should not be in the building till these investigations are completed. But no, nobody is suspended. But they suspend that young man and he was hurt. I tell you, he was hurt. The other fella, he got strokes. And I, I never heard about it yet, but he he was get he was he was getting these little strokes over and over and over and the doctor said well, he got your Barbados and he went to New he went to New York and he, he actually um was able to stabilize and he came he came back but he almost died as a result of the nastiness that they did to him at the Barbados Revenue Authority. Mm -hmm. Now they have evidence. I showed it to them. They have and they can and after doubting me, they could go on their own computer and look and see that I'm not lying. Bec and are these people suspended pending your coming investigations when you got proof? No. You don't need to have people you you don't look you know the police will always when they go to court, they will tell they tell the magistrate, we object to bail because he might inf interfere with the investigation. Well, this might interfere with the investigation if they are at their desk and they're not doing what they were accustomed to doing all along. You are giving them the opportunity now to clean up their act. Don't find anything. You burnt, you, you well, you know, put a little bit of salt in your computer or whatever and mess up everything. I don't know. So, so something, this is not good enough. I'm, I'm, no, we should not be hearing from the revenue commissioner because she too, she should be 
away from the job because if all these infelicities are happening under her watch and she ain't know about them mind you i believe that she know about them because at least about most of them there's some that she knows about but i do because she is not competent and capable to manage bra she's somebody's friend wow as a matter of fact when they did the interviews she was the last in the pile but then um you know the person who makes that final decision can say i don't care when they say i want this body because the prime minister makes that decision in the end you know because she was not she 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 did, she did not come close to be um to succeeding at the interview at the interviewing process and the and the gutless board stayed there if i had if i have had four people interview for a job and the number four man get it i would say well look you think you think so low of me and then still want me to run an organization i gone yeah i think i stick around i i i look i recommend three people above this and the last body get a job and that means you you don't have any confidence in me so why am i here and they remain there i could understand um you know prestige uh, um cv but if you had it on your cv once you could say well i was a member of the board of so and so i put my cv i'm gonna tell how long It's, it's just it's it's awful it's awful and as uh, somebody said whoa just whoa you know um it, it's really um very very awful and this is why we must um dr ferdinand we must continue to speak we must open up our mouth when you see it you speak about it don't stop don't stop listen we're here right now <laughs> and we're at this juncture where you where we are right now we weren't there last year right so we're not we're not stepping back it's forward ever, backward never. We're going hard and put the foot on the gas and keep going, right? Um, we saw what happened in Parliament, um, in, in the Senate today, which is disgraceful for them yeah, to be trying to shout down, to shout absolutely. down um, um, Ryan Walters, you know, and, and, and then people are going to talk about when we try to support the opposition, they're saying that because we're supporting DLP. People, get a grip just look and, and you would see what happened in the senate today and see why those those senators inside there need the support of the people on the outside or that, they're going to eat them raw in there they're going to try to eat them raw my friend the president of the senate is negligent in the performance of his duties if he allowed that behavior because he can put them out uh, 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 you, you are supposed to sit in silence and allow the other people to speak well, I but watched I, it. I, 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 know, I, I, I heard about it, you know. Let me tell you. When I was in the Senate, a friend of mine told me that another senator who used to be heckling me when I'm speaking said to him that he, they decided that parliamentary group that he got to do these things to me. So it is planned. This, this behavior... This bad behavior is orchestrated at the top, from the very top. Yes, and the big joke is, he did, he was not supposed, to, I was not supposed to know that, but the idiot liked talking so much, and even I talked to one of my friends that I've known from the time I was a boy. He didn't know that we were friends, so he went and spilled his guts. And, and, and my friend came and tell me as well, but this this particular man, I'm not going to call his name, tell me that, they, that, that they're, they're supposed to do this to you. So they used to go out there and try to, every time I speak, I have an hour to speak in the est in the in the estimates. Man, I get I get a chance. I get to speak for forty minutes because they get up and block me out of them, and then this president will not give me back my time. It it is it is orchestrated bad behavior. They are not setting an example for the young people. That is where a lot of young people do not want to go into parliament, and they like it so because they can bring their um, scraping the bucket people, uh, scraping the bottom of the barrel people. To, um, to, 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 to help run this place. The, this behavior, you know, the, 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 the Senate is the upper house. It's like the, it's the, like the House of Lords, the equivalent of the House of Lords in England. You do not see that behavior in the House of Lords. It's supposed to be a more matured place. But you can't have maturity from rubble. And that is what they put in there. Yeah. 
you know um somebody is um good night miss um um good McLean, night Max yeah McLean, good night miss mclean is being with us a bit more than normal because we are in the throes of you know the the, the estimates and going to go into the budget and um as a former senator we have asked her to be on here to explain a lot of things along with um, mr franklin so we're very happy to have you here we're honored to have you here ma'am um, you know, um, someone is asking, uh, you know, about the rules and the quorum of the Senate. And um, and you have that in our in your hand. Calvin McKenzie, come to the front of the class, Mr. Calvin, um, Dr. Calvin McKenzie, because Mr. Um, Miss, Miss, <laughs> she has the, she has a book right there in her hand. So go take it away, Miss McLean. And this is thank you. Thank you. And, and good evening. Go and I. I sat through the bad behavior, and I will call names because yes. I take yes. the names. I was leader of government, of government business. What is that name years. of that person? Who? I'll, I'll get there, Marcia. I'll yeah, get there. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was leader of government business for 10 years, and you can ask any of my Senate colleagues, mm -hmm. you can ask the, the opposition senators and the independent senators. People will get excited and whatever but i never allowed that kind of thing and i certainly did not get involved in that what i heard today i can read the rules and then i will call the name this is the standing orders of the senator barbados made under the constitution of barbados section 51. this is what was presented to me when i became a senator at page 21 22 of this document at paragraph 37 it says rules for members not speaking and that is in bold. A senator present in the Senate during a debate, A, shall enter or leave the Senate with decorum. B, shall not read books, newspapers, letters, or other documents, save such as relate to the, to the business before the Senate. C, shall maintain silence while another senator is speaking and shall not interrupt except in accordance with these standing orders and D shall otherwise conduct himself in a fit and proper manner so as to maintain dignity and order. I sat and I heard the president of the Senate on no less than about four occasions ask his colleagues to behave. I know the, the voice of the, the leader of government, government business, Senator Lisa Cummins. I heard her on multiple occasions. That's right. I know the voice of the one of the well, of both of the priests, but I heard the voice of Senator Charles Morris, the newest oh, senator. And I, I believe, and I will say this now as an Anglican, because he's a priest ordained in my denomination. I would expect better. I have observed Senator Reverend Dr. Rogers, and he always conducts himself with decorum. To me, it is disgusting yep. that a man of the cloth who is supposed to provide, who read, who prayed at the beginning, and I, I am getting very upset about this, Mars, because I take it seriously. It was disgusting, and they yep. kept going on. Now, you, what they're doing is simple. They would not have done it to somebody who was a seasoned senator, but they were trying to intimidate Senator Walters, and he was on his own today. Now, there are 12 government senators in that room sitting on the across the, the table all across leading up to the head of the table where the president who is the 12th member sits and i listen to them i and i can i can tell you this because on more than one occasion i have said to colleagues of mine and in this case i will call a name as well when santia bradshaw was a senator and she herself can tell you this that when they tried to, to, to and, and not necessarily when she was speaking, you know, they, they would try to intimidate her because she was often there by herself because her, her other senator was often missing. And I said, no, you will not do that. You see, and so when I listened to that, they were like rabble rousers. They were just, it was totally disgraceful because, you know, in Barbados, and, and tradition is important. Tradition is important because there's certain messages and standards that are important. People will tell you the reason why you found a certain kind of atmosphere in the Senate was that you were sitting around a table 
in the House of Assembly, where you have an opposition and government, they tend to sit across the aisle from each other. And there's a, you know, and, and to me, it was shameful. The president did try. I mean, Caswell made his comment, and I think he could have done better because the rules also give him, empower him to do certain things. But for me, there's a simple thing I live by, do unto others. And recognizing that this would have been the second time that Senator Walters was speaking. And they were all carrying on like they were in a fish market. I'm sorry. You know? And, 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 and well, I, I see what you say, Pedro. But I call him out because he's supposed to be a man of God. Stood up in front of the, 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 his colleagues, say leading prayers, and then you're behaving like that. No, you, you have to be an exemplar. You know? It is shameful. Man of the cloth. You know, in the old days, diapers used to be made of cloth. Well, <laughs> oh, yes. well I, I, I mean, Ma Maxine, I will tell you that I, will, as, as a minister of, of, of religion, I will distance myself from Charles Morris. I have done this before when he was when he used to have the program on CBC TV and he talked a lot of crap about marriage and other things and, and, and they removed them off of CBC TV because of some pressure that I believe Lucille Beard brought to bear where he was con where he was concerned. Um, so in, in terms of um, in terms of decorum, I am embarrassed to even even associate with the type of profession that we would have listening to his, uh, watching and observing his performance in the, in, in the Senate today. And I, and I want to make that very, very, very clear. I make no apologies with regards to that. And, and to be honest with you, if I had got on that way inside the Senate, my district executive would have called me up the very next day in terms of how I would have represented the district as a, as a public servant in the, in the Senate. That's what my district would have done. You see, you see, and this is, this, you know, this is not, and they can they can accuse me of whatever as all they can accuse me of is trying to maintain standards because you see as adults we have to remember that people children are observing us and listening and so on and you you have to recognize that at the end of the day some people will have greater influence than others some there are certain expectations we have of people and leaders in whatever capacity, whether you're a leader of a, of a girl guide movement, the Cub Scouts, the church, the Senate, government, private sector, leaders are expected to demonstrate a level of behavior that is superior, that is better than those that they follow and, and should be emulated. But when I saw that today, I mean, I sent a note to the clerk of parliament to ask him what was going on mm -hmm. because I could not be and, and they were just going on and going on and and if they think it is funny it is okay when nobody was able to view it because the thing is it isn't only Caswell or or um, Marcia or whoever or myself watching people watch if, if you go you will see that people watch our parliament from all over the world Barbadians overseas watch it we encourage students of political science children who are doing, you know, the equivalent to civics education to watch these things. And I will, I will give you an example, Marcia, of why it is important that we pay attention to the things that our children um, see and hear us do and so on. I did a presentation at a primary school recently as part of the um, Africa Awareness Day. And before I wanted to show a film because I wanted to assess what the children were thinking about, you know, what their thoughts were, what how, what vision, you know, what, yeah. what image they had of Africa and so on. And I, I asked, I said, okay, tell and these are this is primary school, from reception to class, where I believe. Tell me what comes to mind, a word or two that comes to mind when you think of Africa. And somebody said animals, something else. Then one little fellow said, the Barbados flag. <laughs> now, the adults started to laugh. And I, <laughs> and I said, no, you see, I could not, I had to stifle a laugh. But I said quickly to the youngster. Oh, hold a minute, yes. but, but that went too far. <laughs> you said that they asked. <laughs> I asked, it was me you, doing you the presentation. Asked, you asked the 
the children when they think of Africa, what comes to mind? Yes. And some of them say animal and, and so on, you know, like and so on. And yes. one little one put up their hand and yep. said the Barbados flag. Yes. <laughs> and so I said well, and the teachers, a couple of adults started to laugh because obviously he's been hearing something. And I said, yes, because we have two embassies. So it will be flying high in Accra, Ghana, and in Nairobi, Kenya. Because, you know, I, I could not laugh and, you know, get into it. But right away, it said to me, you see how we influence children. So, so we have to be very careful, <laughs> the messages we send, because I am sure that that child's parent probably was not even aware that he was you listening. That he was listening and hearing that, that Barbados sound like talk about Caswell, well, That sounds like a Caswell at, at that age. <laughs> <laughs> they get up their hand, the Barbados flag. No, that is, that is like that's that's like a comedy that you hear Max Single and them tell you. know? it's like <laughs> that is hilarious. You know, but it just it just. But you see, I could have I could have dissolved into laughter. And then what? But then I said, no. Let me use this as a, a nice little teaching moment. Yeah. We have two embassies in the country. I said one in West Africa and the other one because we were actually talking about Malawi. And so, but you know, so I think Marcia, as we and you see, the other thing for me is in terms of behavior. One of the things that I always kept at the front of my mind as a senator was the fact that we are there to debate serious business, matters that impact on the lives of the people of Barbados. And in this case, today they were looking at two pieces of legislation. Um, one was the was the Queen of the Hospital Amendment Bill, and the other one had to do with the freedom of movement, the one about CARICOM and so on. And, and, and I'm saying, are they serious about what they're doing? And I must share this though because I told I, I, somebody sent me and asked me if I would raise it, and and true to, uh, to 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 what we do, I will. Somebody asked me what was the dress code of the Senate, and I said business wear. Caswell can tell you. I mean, if you want to see Caswell in a suit, you would have seen him in in the in the Senate dressed in his suit. Bag. his suit and his bag. <laughs> <laughs> But but the person I asked the person why. And and it, they sent me back. They say somebody seems to be dressed in a track suit. I, and I, I said, no, that that what, can't be. No, a what, young lady. Let me, let me ask if anybody else saw that because I was saying, is it that I'm seeing a different or is a different type of an outfit? Because you know, style people are into different but it looked to me like did it look to you all that Senator Lisa uh, Minister Lisa Cummings was wearing a sweatsuit? Anybody else saw it that? Looked that way. I would imagine that it wasn't that, but it certainly looked that way. When the person drew it to my attention, because I, I noticed the thing and it, the, the way I said, I, I told the person I would hate to think so, but I, I didn't see the full thing, but it just you reminded me yeah, that people are, you see, again, that is illustrative of the extent to which people are paying attention to a whole range of things about yeah. how we how we operate so you know and, but, and, and but wait, wait a minute maxine you you you're talking about lisa's attire yes and it'll come as, it was a white uh, yeah, pants suit some, some, it was a white pants suit it was a it was blue you no know, it, it was, was black blue. and white it was black uh, and white, yeah, white there, there, was a, there was a black there was a black inside inside blouse as far as i recall white uh, pants and a white kind of jacket no probably it's a different time but no, the that, one that, that i was, saw today this one had a striped something because i went and, and I, I i revisited the, okay, okay. look at it again um reverend yeah i'll, I'll have to look back at it i have to look yeah. back at it, it but i, I told the person i would raise it because i told them i couldn't i could tell you what the dress is i can't tell you what it is it just yeah i yeah. just look you know um, no, but, um, but, no, 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 sometimes she used to appear in the Senate in some real outlandish uh, outfits and we used to have some good laughs at them, you know, but uh, we, 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 we were nice, we didn't laugh in her face, but um, then these people would start pausing her, said she looked like a yak and that kind of stuff in some of the courts that she was wearing. No, I think she has, she has, she has, she has a weird sense of, of style. I think she should get um no, no the premise i had jessica to dress her she needs somebody to do the same no 
I, but I, I don't generally have any problem with it. But it's just yeah, when the person know, drew it, it to it's my that's attention. That's her style. That's her style. The whole thing, though. Well, I, I just, just saw this particular because, thing and I was yeah, asked it, if it, it was it, like it said. Well, like like yeah, it looked like a, a track suit to me. That it wasn't a pantsuit. It didn't look like a pantsuit. Mm -hmm. Um, and it wasn't fully white. It wasn't all white. No, so, it, was, you know, it was a dark it something. But I just, uh, I just but, um, fearful. I was fearful to the to the question and the request that I raise it for clarification but you know and I, I use that and I use that in the same way that I, I chose to speak about the behavior to say people are watching and you need to to appreciate that you know people are concerned that certain norms ob obtain you know but yeah yeah that which 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 um which is is very very um very important no miss McLean as it um Mr Franklin did a very good job of explaining about what the budget what what, what the budget is because that's coming up on the 18th um you know what 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 do you say what, to what, barbados what? you know we educate on the show is there anything that you want to add um um concerning the budget what are we to look out for what 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 you know can you educate us a little bit more on the budget well, the only thing I, I, I heard most of what Caswell said about the budget, and I, I, I then went to uh, kind of try to remember what it was the title that they often use, because they say, was it, um, they say financial statement and budgetary proposals. So I, cause, yes. because I think in terms of, so my question was that in, in relation to what you identified as as the budget in the strictest sense of the word when you ta when you tack on the, the the earlier part the first part financial statement um does that does that then perhaps give them some scope to to do some things other than because what you're saying essentially is that the budgetary part of this exercise that you're going through to fix the the revenues and expenditures of government is to determine where there is a, a shortfall of revenue how you will fill that gap but uh, traditionally and i think you you pointed out, that out as well in addition to that we often hear of concessions given um and so on whether it be at the level of the individual taxpayer or to corporate entities and things of that nature um so so in a, in a sense as I listen to you, I, 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 I maybe it become a, a tradition uh, and a practice um, rather than strictly adhering to, to, to you know the what we call the conventional definitions and so on that they have used this, especially you know when when you hear all the fancy giveaways, you know it's election time. Traditionally, that's what a lot of governments have done um, that they use that pre-election budgetary exercise to to offer. Um, enticements, as a, that's a good word, Caswell. Yeah, to, yeah. To, or or inducements. <laughs> inducements to you know to to, to 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 the population, whether it's the, the the you know the commercial class, business class, and so on. Um, but but what we what we are looking at now, of course, for me, um, as we as I mean, Barbadians have been lamenting the the ex, you know the. The, uh, the extremely tough situation they face with increased taxes and so on because we I, I tell people we are heavily taxed and over the years Barbadians have accepted that um, we use the, the, the proceed taxes to finance the the expenditures of government and where things are working well um, people are not too displeased i mean nobody wants to pay taxes but i mean i i i heard the previous discussion about land tax and so on i i have um accepted that there's a a, a, a rationale for it the problem when it becomes when it starts to just keep increasing and increasing and so on and when it is it is it is um onerous on certain people because you may you may have land but you are property but you may not have you know the the, the income to finance, mm -hmm. you know, the level of taxes and so on. So, so, and then when you hear about wastage, it, it frustrates the taxpayer. But um, I, I am, I am, I'm trying to figure out what, 
measures the prime minister and minister of finance will will bring um i i i heard today in the in the um discussion of the the qbh amendment bill the minister of health senator walcott mentioned that the government is at least the hospital the government the hospital the same thing the hospital is seeking to borrow 130 million dollars um and this money will be will be will be repaid from the um the health levy that is that is collected on behalf of the hospital by the um national insurance um service um now the question is are we well he, he did say that he was talking about capital capital expenditures and in looking at that he mentioned that they will be replacing equipment and all of these things but um there are a lot of questions that i think when we think of the budget and we think of particular areas of expenditure the question is before you come to tax the taxpayer are you are we or can we be assured as barbadians that there's a serious effort to ensure that there is proper use of of current tax you know proceeds the current revenues that are collected um is are we comfortable that there's not significant wastage and the truth is when you look at this i am not sure that we can shut our eyes or open our eyes for that matter stand up or sit down and say that we are comfortable that there has not been wastage i mean we have gone through um, a whole set of things housing is one that we've talked about um you know millions have been spent on emergency houses and we know that that hasn't you know that hasn't panned out the way it's supposed to um even the hospital i i i i was i was very um interested in in the contribution made by the minister of health of course because we haven't heard from him for a long time and he did admit that we hadn't been hearing from him and that in fact his former colleague in the ministry dr brown was the person whose voice we were hearing but i listened very carefully to a senior medical professional senator maynard mm -hmm. and he was he was brutally honest i would say in terms of some of the issues that he raised in fact he stood up to correct um senator walters when senator walters indicated that approximately 60 million dollars uh would be would have been collected in um you know proceeds of that levy and he said it is 75 75 million and up and upwards mm. now that is i think that's a three percent levy um and so when you start to look at the people who pay national insurance because this is the other concern i have about taxation the people who you know who are whose incomes are taxed before they receive their salary 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 persons typically in in and barbados is no exception typically in countries where that happens the burden of taxation falls disproportionately on on such persons in other words a lot of self-employed persons one do not necessarily declare their the incomes and meet their tax obligations in a timely manner if at all or okay. if, if they do in 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 proportion to their earnings and so on or they or sometimes they have legitimate opportunities to avoid paying taxes there's a difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion as we know but they may have that so you often find that a salary person and think about and Kazu can confirm this because I believe government is still the single largest employer on the island. Um, that civil servants then, as a percentage of the workforce, will be paying us, you know, a, a, a significant portion of any levies that come directly off of salaries. And so when that happens, you want to be sure that that money is being efficiently used. If you talk to to, to anybody who has been around the hospital, and I certainly have had to be around the hospital for several years um march the first would have been 2019 would have been the day that we had our service of thanksgiving for my late sister who for about 42 years suffered from lupus and therefore 
And for about 15 years, spent time as a dialysis patient at the hospital. So I had a lot of experience, mother, father, brother, sister, you know. Um, so I, you know, so in, in terms of the hospital and you look at its operations, you, you talk to medical professionals and so on. And you look at the systems because I know a little bit about management. I, I'm not training hospital management, but I can look at processes and see how, how things flow and so on. And you ask yourself, can more be done and to, to improve the efficiency of resource use and so on at the hospital? And then on top of that, you, you had, and this was what this bill was about very recently. And Caswell, well, was it 2022 or 2019 that the, uh, the bill was amended? I thought, I'm thinking it's 2022 to create the post of man um, executive director. It was 2022. Um, you're, you're, you're muted, Caswell. Well. Was it 2019 or 2022? 20, 2019. 2019, you had, you, you changed the position to create um a managing director now no, a managing no, ex director, executive executive chairman executive director executive, executive, chair, chairman. Yeah, executive chairman this is a director chair of the boards that's why the, i'm getting confused when i said director executive chair this is the person who chairs the board and if you again i i put on my training in management hat and there's supposed to be separation of responsibilities and so on as a as a form of internal control and what you have is you have a person who normally um, CEO who would be reporting to the board. That person now technically reports to himself or herself. And in fact, I, I, there was an interesting comment made by by one of the I think it might have been the um, doctor, doctor, doc, Senator, Senator Maynard himself. Um, and yes, it was Senator Maynard. I wrote it on the executive chair. And he made the point that the executive chair is CEO during the day and went into the boardroom in the evening to implement. And I will use these thoughts, because I'm these words, because I'm not sure those words, but the, that person's bad thoughts of the day. So in other words, as CEO, you are making operational decisions and then you are heading the body that makes the policy decisions. And okay. the question is, is that a proper separation? Now, I, I recall um, the minister seeking to justify this and so on, and in the, in the, in, this was in the, in the Senate debate. And I recall in the House of Assembly, the minister of state, because the minister of state is a member of a parliament seeking to justify this. But I can say that Certainly, from my perspective as somebody who's trained generations of, of, of public officers in management, only today I was reflecting. And I even had in one of my classes the, the former Minister of Health, Colonel Bostic. So, you know, I, I, I've, I've, I've seen all kinds of people come before me. I've, oh, I, I so, I, so I got you to blame. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was only one course and i'll tell you i i really think that that the the colonel did, did try 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 his best but again one of the questions i might ask is what impact because you know put something in my head caswell what impact did the creation of an executive director i've got your title right executive chairman chairman right well the executive chairman i'll try chairman chairman what impact did having an executive chairman have on the, the relationship between the minister and other managers and so on? Because you could have, you could have, and the question I would ask to whom did this executive chairman report? I mean, there are a whole set of questions in there. The prime so, minister. Well, okay then. So if, if, if that were the case, if in fact the executive chair reported to the prime minister, then you have bypassed the minister. So that, you know, the long and short of it, Marcy, in relation to that piece of legislation, there are a number of things which I think would have functioned less effectively and efficiently with that change. Yeah. Um, and, and that, for my, to my mind, was problematic. And, and so to revert, and in fact, it was interesting because the, 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 the opposition senator, Senator Walters, I think he shocked me when he... Um, 
was it that one or was it the was it no it wasn't it wasn't that one it was the second bill it was the second bill because the second bill on 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 free movement he he he, he supported the bill and so on but no he he expressed some serious concerns uh, about the the whole thing of efficiency and accountability in relation to the 75 million that is collected between the 60 i will use this figure and that of of senator maynard the, between the 60 and 75 million dollars collected on an annual basis and 60 or 75 million dollars from the from the salaries and wages of regular barbadians because i just explained how how the burden falls because of of your your being a salaried person how that is expended and whether it is put to the best use and so on. so i i am concerned that the need to move this piece of legislation back probably was very symptomatic of the fact that the person for whom the change was made and i i am i i say that because of the circumstances that led to the change has moved on yeah. and you're now seeking to recruit somebody else well i understand i mean this is you know barbados is a for a small <laughs> you know two by three island that the person to take over the job has has is on the island and i heard i think um Pastor Ferdinand raised it earlier about the number of persons who applied for the job and the fact that there were, was it 84? That it, was, was it was 80 something. It, it was 80 something, but only two locals. Only two were locals. Only two were locals. But, but I will tell you the truth. If I were, and, and the truth is that you 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 had, I well, let me make the point and then I will come back to, to, the, to, the, to Dr. James. Or uh, should I, 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 if I were, if I were, a Barbadian looking at that job, and I observed what transpired. I rem I recall seeing the exercise that is taking place now. Health was one of the heads called, and I saw Dr. James in the well of Parliament. And if that footage is still around, I recommend people go and look at it. It was not nice um, in terms of how how I I would contrast it with how I see things unfolding now. Um, and the truth is, as somebody who had the opportunity to chair the committee that recruited, that, that interviewed him and made a recommendation, I was impressed with his qualifications then. I was able to observe him working at the hospital. And I can tell you that there were several achievements. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, I, I would have to investigate if I can get the information. After his departure, and the creation of this new position and so on, there were several reversals to the detriment of what service, et cetera, has been delivered at the hospital. Yeah. Um, and, and that is clear. Things that were committees that you got reports on, on patient care, you got reports on a whole set of things. Those things were, were, were ignored. And so mm -hmm. in essence for me, and, and Marcy, I say this because I know you're very concerned that when I speak, people want to label me. Yes, you can label me a former member of cabinet of a DLP administration of 10 years. Yes. But I also would have had the, because of that, I would have had the opportunity to observe. And because right. I'm old enough, I was able to observe prior to that, the 15 years that went before and other years that went before that both administrations. That I can tell you that I saw the reversal of some very critical initiatives that previously um, that were implemented during his tenure that made a significant difference to the to the operations of the hospital, but most importantly to, to the delivery of patient care. And, may I interject? Uh, sure, sure. I can. Mm -hmm. uh, Maxine, there were a couple of things that caught my attention. And in treating to the executive chairman, I found uh, Dr. Haynes spoke very glowingly of the accomplishments, if, if my mind serves me correctly, very glowingly of the accomplishments of the, of the, of the chairman. Now, I, I, I didn't know all the details and anything of that nature, and I listened to what she had to say. No, she doesn't um, know either. <laughs> I would have to, to pay attention to that in terms of what you have just expressed, because I, I, I was not aware of it, all right? Uh, but let me say this. I found it very disrespectful to Barbadians and, and disingenuous when the Honorable Liz Thompson sought to um, minimize the $75 million a year as against the annual budget 
of the of the hospital at 260 million and she talked about it being minuscule it and, cannot, and, and cannot it, it, it cannot be because 75 million compared to 260 million is about 20 percent i am not aware 20 percent is minuscule if you mm. were talking about 0.5 percent or one percent i i could understand that but you're talking about a quarter of the budget of the hospital being minuscule. That's a disrespect to the taxpayers of this country. And I, I took real... It is um, more than uh, a quarter, though. Yeah, I, I, I dare say it probably it, it probably is. You know, so uh, that was one of the things that, that you know, I, I keep speaking to this matter of being disingenuous. How they've spoken about the show, how they treat the people when the questions are raised, how they're speaking concerning persons when they are at their constituency meetings and, and, and so forth. The, the the place for that type of nasty, stinking, pardon the expression, Mar Marcia, I apologize, but the place for that nasty, stinking type of behavior and talk have gone. This is 2024. We will no longer tolerate that disrespect and that disingenuous manner in which you speak to people. I was appalled, Max, uh, Maxine, to, in the behavior and in the way that um, the Honorable Elizabeth Thompson spoke to Mr. Ryan Walters as a fellow senator. If you don't know how to get your, your, your emotions under control, find somewhere else to, to, to occupy. But in that hallowed you know, chamber... No, 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 but she is a lay preacher. I see her ever so often in uh, getting into church and sounding sincere, but I know better. I don't um, want to say with that black woman. That's what I'm going to continue to say something about those two. Um, yeah. That um, Liz Thompson, Liz Thompson, and um, and Charles Morris. I mean, those when you listen to them, it's like they 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 hurt my ear, and it, they sound disgusting. I want to throw up. Honestly, I'm not even yeah, exaggerating. Yeah. That's the the, the great something is that of me because yeah. their behavior is very pig like in jamaica we call them a hog like hog like behavior and and that's what well, that's the only thing that comes to my mind it's like uh and and my my thing is i'm glad that uh mr ryan walters did not go and and get into the mud with them correct and correct wallow, and wallow in the in the pig time in the pig style with these people and 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 i and i don't mince my words because those two in particular I will never forget what she what she told Berla, Berla de Pisa, to go back to Africa like it's a curse. She's she and that she needs education. She, you need to be educated if you are listening to this. You you yes, you might be an an, an adult, an older person, but you need education to say something like that to another woman and think you're cursing her. And and no apology was made about it. None. And they think that that behavior like that is is good. Charles Morris's behavior. I mean, the allegations of his behavior in in the UK. You should be ashamed of yourself if those uh, allegations are true. You should be ashamed. You uh, that's disgusting behavior if it is true. That's just what I wanted to say. But go ahead, Mr. Franklin. I you know, you um, you know, when you lay down, you see, the thing when you get in, get down in the gutter, the dirt, the pigs, the pigs love it, though. You must, have, you must remember. You see, the pigs love it. Um, but Liz Thompson is saying things like um, $75 million in minuscule. But then you got to contrast that with Greenland. That was minuscule too. And the golden shower you know, that she had up there. It's at least a minuscule too. They don't have any regard for the people's money. But that is the side. Or I, or, but by the way, um, I just went online and I looked for the Senate debate today. And I went and searched. They found Lisa Cummins in her tracksuit. Um, yeah, and, and sorry, the, uh, my, I made the mistake. I, I had, I was speaking of Dr. Crystal Haynes no, uh, 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 mm. when I spoke oh, because, the white, the white you know, suit, um, mm. I thought she was the person you were speaking about. My but, apologies. No, um, no, but I, I still want to say that um, Matt Singh said that this, you know, the Senate dress we sent is business attire. Well, I can say she has no business in this. <laughs> she has no business in this thing. Hey, hold up. The hospital administrator, <laughs> the hospital administrators are paid fantastic salaries in the United States, Canada. I don't know. I don't check England for one reason or the other. 
But if you have a, a hospital manager, Barbados cannot pay one of those hospital managers you see in those big hospitals in the in, in, in United oh, States. Yeah. We can't afford to pay them. So when you see some person coming from those jurisdictions out there to come to us, them are the real top-notch uh, hospital manager, just like the guy with the BDMA, he was probably a little bit above the waiter. And a uh, bell boy. But certainly, they bring these people in and, and give them these positions. And they don't have a clue because then they turn out and rely on the Belgians who are here to help them do the work and, the, and, the, and piggyback on them. But, and they said that they only had two people from, from Barbados. Why would a Belgian want to go and work in that kind of environment? You know, better know what, what, the, what it is all about. You're not going to, if you are trained and a trained as a hospital administrator, you really feel that you're going to come and work for Champ Change in Barbados, leave where you are as a Barbadian and come and work for Champ, or, or stay where you are, work for um, a decent salary, or more than a decent salary, and don't have to go through this political nonsense that you see every day in, at the QEH. So you, you're not going to get Belgians who are familiar with the hospital unless there's a, a, a shift in the culture of the hospital, the way they, they, do, they do business. So you're not going to get a Barbados worth his salt to stand up. And, 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 and mind you, the hospital now has more management, more like more chiefs than they, than they have Indians. You want, the hospital don't need more managers, they need, they need nurses. Well, they, they say they're going to hire 60, I think, soon. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. but they're going to hire 60 soon. They should hire 60 since um, two years ago, and they have hired 60 now. You know, the, the nurses work and then go back to work somewhere else. The, uh, and then they come back and work another shift. You have nurses working in the polyclinics who then, because the QH does not have enough staff, go and work at the QEH for another shift. So they work two shifts a day, one in the hospital and one at the, the um and in the, in the substantive job at the polyclinic. They, they and they, they know this. This is not this is not this is not a secret. So what they, 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 so telling us that we can hire sixty people does not help us. They, those sixty people will, will scratch the surface. You know and, and, and um you are hiring all kinds of fancy minds. I remember when the QEH was running and running fairly well. You had um, the guy who was um the, chief, the former chief justice's brother um Williams, yes, Millington and Miss Didier, and and um this he was he was, uh, was um Sandiford, I think his name was, four managers, and they ran the hospital and they ran it well. You come in here, they remember when they locked off the the top thing and um, fired them or whatever else, they had to pay them some money, and then you come up with this nonsense about. Head of this service, head of the next service. You got bare managers and nobody actually dealing with patients. You got communication specialists, but you want somebody who can address a, um, a, a, a diabetic sore. You 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 don't a communication communication specialists don't don't can't do that. You want you want to do these fancy PR things rather than do the real work that hospitals established to do. That is where the hospital is failing. I don't care how much money you put in it if you do not train and staff it with good nurses you're going to care what you do this is it, it will always end up like this then again you call the nurses go work with umbrellas if they're working in the emergency room come down don't forget that part it's a sieve so fix those things but my problem and i i, I quarreled about it i said this is wrong um colonel bostick he tried to justify it his his niece um wanted that person his job and she got it and that is the problem you know too many jobs are reserved for political people as not are not for knowledgeable people you don't same thing at bra you're going to get your your friends and put them in job because you my friend want a job and i don't care which job it is you can get this one whether qualified or not, we've seen that in, in personal administration, we've seen it at the hospital, we've seen it at the level of PS, um, director of finance, we see it all over the place. People are not 
capable to do the job that they were doing and you, you promote them again and something else more complex more complicated why because they are highly favored by the prime minister and why say prime minister because under the amendments to the constitution in 1974 the prime minister is supposed to be consulted by the, by, um, by the departments of heads of departments and permanent secretaries and stuff consult doesn't mean a point but we have misinterpreted consult to mean that the prime minister makes that decision and boy she's made some some wall some some doozers here we tell you to put the wrong people in the job the, um the lady that was in the job before she was a minister's um wife you know it looked bad it looked bad passing legislation to give a minister and your cabinet wife a job changing the law she could not qualify under the legislation that existed so you change it and then give her more responsibilities why because she was an ardent barbarous Labour party person she i she didn't know about, she had a clue about running a hospital she picked up some things on the job well so be it At sanitation people pick up things on the job too you know so going back now and say oh we made a mistake that does not give me any comfort because they knew they were making a mistake when they did it you know they just didn't care because it is not their money i know you want to bring some person from outside of barbados who cannot be a high flyer if you were a high flyer you would not come and work for the champ change in barbados i made that point when they brought the guy from bt and my when they pointed out in the senate that no man will leave who is a man who runs hotels in the united states major hotels in the united states to come and work for sixty thousand us us dollars a year mm -mm. And I, and I, I said I pointed out that my son, who was a junior manager at 25 years old, was earning 85,000 US in the United States. Of course, his friends called his friends again. He used to watch the Senate because when he told his friends that his daddy was a senator, all of his friends, you know, used to log on to watch me. <laughs> so they they called and tell him, but you daddy said, tell me how much money you make anything, you know, he, you know. So you were right earlier when you said that people watch the Senate. People, it is only watch in Barbados. So the, the bad behavior, that low class behavior, that be, you, I'll tell you something now. You do not see that in the fish market, at least not in cheap side where I go. You hear more, more intellectual discourse in the market, the fish market, than you get in, in uh, you got in the house, in the, in the Senate. And the so, thing is, this, this, this goes global. Yeah, it's, it's you, it's you all, all, all over the place. You know, that's all that's over the place. That really, really uh, annoyed me today. Um, you know, I, I have no problems with people objecting and, and so forth. I mean, Maxine, you, Maxine, you, you, you sat, I'm sure, and watched what I watched. I, I even watched the inter the uh, um, points of, of order that, that um, the Honorable Liz Thompson raised, and it was like you know you're like you're talking dung at this this guy's an equitable senator to you man he may be younger and i i understand that but treat him with the respect and, and i found it really i i was disgusted i was absolutely no, no, those, those are intimidatory tactics and i i, I find, you know as i said my whole approach to life and i i was say this to senator thompson she sits with me on the party parliamentary reform commission the old politics that you practice, let it go. You you know, yes. and and, yes. and and extend. You, you're now you're now being you're you're, you're studying theology and so on. Um, Caswell said she's she's been preaching, and and all of that. You know, to me, you you have to live the things that you you say. You Before I go on, Marcy, I, I got a correction, talk. and I'm happy to say that. Um, and I got a note here from someone. Lisa Cummins was wearing a skirt suit with stripes down the sides of the skirt and down the sleeves of the top. It seems to be inspired by the athletic look. So for the person who was concerned, because, you know, as I said, Barbadians are watching. So I'm not just... Um,
knocking it for knocking sake i looked at any person drew it to my attention it had me a little worried because as i say there's standards but back to what you're saying you know yeah. you 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 can do that and I, I just think that there's a time and place for everything when when you were a member of the house of assembly there's a, a certain kind of way that they operate not that i agree with it all you know completely but certainly as you move into the the senate there's a is a, a different atmosphere and i just think that you know it doesn't do you any any good because at the end of the day you are you are presenting yourself as much as you seek to intimidate and and interrupt so that you can you know as you say you can talk down to the person or whatever but i was happy to see that senator walter stood his ground you yes, know he did not yes. lose focus because the other thing is that you're standing trying to make a speech and when you get 11 people across uh, you know on the entire side of a room heckling because i call it heckling then you then you stand because first of all the, the noise in your ear not from one not from two but probably for the entire group of them kind of throws you off if you don't know how to stay focused and, and if you're if you are doing it for the, the second time you're speaking it can be it can be difficult and i just find it to be uncharitable to be immature to be unprofessional to be rude you know and I thought he handled it very well. No, no, no. It, it is not for it is not for him to handle it. It is for the president of the Senate to call those people to order. True. And when he felt that, it, see, the job of a presiding officer in Parliament, House of Assembly, or the Senate, is to protect the minority. Mm. The majority can take care of themselves. You don't need. You don't. The, the majority does not need. A, 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 a presiding officer, you know, they can do what they like. But the um, presiding officer's main role in any assembly is to protect the minority. And he failed miserably. And I'm, sad, I'm sorry to say this about him. I, I, I consider him my friend. But he has now allowed the Senate to become um, lower than the fish market. Because I tell you, I do not see that behavior in the fish market. I went to the fish market up to um, sa Saturday. I, 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 um, I went to buy fish, a little girl about two. She came up to me, she says, you want fish? I said, yes. She says, well, go to my mummy. <laughs> 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 and I went and I, I got some fish from her mummy. You know, the, you know, but I don't see that behavior. You might, you, might, you might hear a raised voice ever so often down there, but that type of behavior is not, is not even associated with fish markets in Barbados. Yeah, you know? Kaz, rum shop. <laughs> Sorry, Kaz, rum, my, mother would, my mother would say you're lacking in the rudiments of common decency. Mm -hmm. you, know? <laughs> you, know, it, you know, the thing is, they think somehow to behave like this gives them, but, but, because they are, they are actually appealing to the lower class yeah and they're no trying way. to they are trying not only to appeal to the lower class but to create some lower classes they they want mindless people who will curse you rah rah people you know that is what they're that, that's that is what they want their supporters to be they don't want an educated class they want people who will when they the say curse that body they will curse you right that's what they are trying to establish. They're, they're not. They're not trying to uplift anybody because if they were uplifting people, you wouldn't only have one bam bam and walk up things at the, at the um, what do you call it at the botanical gardens. You would have an evening of classical music sometimes or porch reading. Uh -uh. Every time you got something, it's it is it is, it is to bring down the level of the people to that bring it down to that level. I'm not saying there's not a a, a, a thing for jumping at the carnival, but then you know. That carnival is about getting rid of the demons before Easter, you know. But we have, a, we, but this best is so bad now that we get our, we have demons all through the year promoted by the government. <laughs> well, I mean, that should make that should make Marcia that, Marcia that should make my my uh, my ministry quite quite active for the entire year. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, but that's, no, honestly, you know, that is what carnival is about. You don't see in Trinidad the people go and do the jump up in Rio, they do it, 
and and uh, Ashburn is the band is done, and everybody is the saint and the angel and stuff, and go and make the um, beg for forgiveness and stuff. They they get they they um, they they um, they they let up their demons, they let up their demons. But we are practicing demons now all through the year. Compliments of this government, because this is what carnival is all about, and they promote it, they fund it, they do everything possible. They they I tell you, they got in a the class. Oh, man. Check, 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 check out real ca carnivals and you will see that it ceases at a particular time. Yes, Easter, actually, Ash Wednesday. Um, the, yes, the day before, the Tuesday before mm -hmm. Ash Wednesday. Yeah, Tuesday before Because there used to be a time when we would have a, there was a Calypso show that we would have and the Trinidadians would come and then all of a sudden Barbadians started to have it during the Lenten season. You know, and people were like, these Trinidadians don't perform in Trinidad at this time. But we have gone into, I suppose a lot of people have, have, have lost an interest. Talking about that, I don't know if we were talking about the Senate. But if you go to Friday's um, presentation of the leader of the opposition, when he spoke the 10 minutes introductory se section of the of the. Um, um of the of the, the you know the that debate and it was the he was talking about youth and sports and he talked about the loss of a moral comp that the need for moral compass and so i i recommend that speech to barbarians i i have been listening closely and there's a general kind of message that i see coming through in a lot of what he says and i i you know it's i think it's time that Barbadians stop and reflect on how we are yeah. behaving, how we are operating, yes. yeah. how we are allowing certain standards to slip. And and, mm -hmm. and, and it is unfortunate because I, I describe it in, in many circumstances as mm -hmm. anything goes. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember years ago, I left KFL a long time ago. I, I Sorry, I had this class and students turned up. They were supposed to be there for a presentation by an accounting firm. And I had to give them a lecture after two weeks after because I waited till the culprits, the main culprits were in the room. And I brought on the board how, when, and where. And I spoke to the whole thing of, you know, what's appropriate, how. And, and, and I think that we are getting to the point where people are saying, take me as I am, you know? And, 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 and we, we have to check that because our, our young people are looking to us. Um, yeah. And so, you know. And but we are creating in Barbados a set of godless, mindless people. You know, you want you 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 really want to create demons with you, you know. Because they will serve your purposes. They will serve to keep you in power. And then you create them, and then you give them. Look, we had to, um today an exchange on brass tacks. Somebody defending the prime minister. These are the people that the prime minister associate with hey, remember i keep telling you and i always i can talk about this as long as I, I still got memory when parliament opened you know i asked him for tickets and my wife could come because it's, i was proud i then my boy fool i was proud to be appointed a senator you know um everybody can be everybody can be a senator at the same time it's only you can only get 21 at any time so and i was i was pleased that i was one of 20 um, um the 21 people out of the 280,000 people in Barbados, I was very happy about that, and I wanted to share it with my wife. And I wanted to buy a nice hat for her, you know, one of these big barbell hats that is blocked with recipe from behind the thing. I wanted to have all of that done, like, 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 like everybody's doing, you know, and carry my wife down. Tell me, can I get a ticket for my wife? So I couldn't even buy the hat. And, but then they had drug men that the police identified to me as drug men. Um, being invited to parliament, and my wife can't come and block on the boy, but she had you know, you, you, know, you know, that 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 bothered me for a while because those drug men were preferred over my my, my wife, you know. And I've never seen her with any drugs, but she don't even take um panadol. And now you, 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 you oh, seriously, but with that, so and you got these the, the drug men coming in here and getting precedence over my wife. But this is, and, and, and watch, when the, you had the uh, lockdown, and then, and, and 
who you give money to? You give money to the people who go and jump up, bam, 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 and they think, get an $8,000 a month and that kind of stuff, so that they can eat because they can't work. But the hotel workers weren't getting any money. There's a lot of people get sent home and they may get sent from the government. But people who were working in the hotel, um, the hotel circuit and doing entertainment and were not paying national insurance contributions, you turn around and get them $8,000. Then, you have a situation where there were a lot of killings in the society. Government was able, government was able to identify who these killers were. And rather than call the police, you tell them, look, maybe we can give some money, don't kill nobody. And the, and the, and the, um, the things went down. So that is where you see criminals will be, will be fighting to support them. My friends in prison, and the prison told me when this, the government changed, um, prison office, prison officers were able to tell me that there were some prisoners that said, oh boys, we're going home soon. And they went home soon. Wow. Despite they hadn't served their sentences. Because they know that their people were in. Yeah. Some of them said the crime boss in, so we we we, we, we covered. <laughs> I don't know who the crime boss is. It's gonna bother him give me no, no letter. But this is what was reported to me. I want nothing up my tail. Well well, you know, you can take the parliamentary position, you know, Castle. I may not be able because I, I, I told Marcia when we began tonight that Parliament is what what I said, Marcia. Uh, Parliament is now uh, what? Oh, it's now in session. Is now in session. <laughs> yes. You could, you could yes. now you express yourself. I can't say so in Parliament. Right. You know, right. and that would clear you of the letter. You know, but you think you think it's so. We 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 need. You know, I, 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 look, this place, you know, the old time people used to carry and get a bush bath. This government want a bush bath. <laughs> they, 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 they want what the thing is washing out of them as some of this place is. Thing. And, and, and I, 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 look, even the devil got his friends. But this, these devils that we have to have too many friends. Yeah, yeah. So that they can look around and, and ask to get um, 600 people to turn up at Parliament because they're going to get. Um, 25 from each constituency to come on parliament to drown out concerned citizens. Everybody in Barbados should be a concerned citizen. Right. But yeah. they know. That's right. They know that they've got some people behind them, some mindless people who don't concern about anything who, other than the, and, other than the, who's the, um, the Barbados, the party leader. And, and you see, and, and I'll tell you something. This WhatsApp message went to Barbados, the party people. And some of them were offended by it. That's where it came out. It got out. Because a, a few, at least a few of them, and there's a, not, not a, 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 a large number of them, but a few of them could not believe that they would be required to behave in this manner. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they tell you already, the Barbados Labour Party has more works on it than the Dems. But they they put powder and makeup on theirs, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's it's a disgrace. The whole thing is a disgrace. We have we actually have um we have seven minutes um to the hour to ten o'clock and um this someone thing, this, your clock your clock me. working? Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> someone sent me I just start talking. The time going and we didn't really realize I, um the, a, a friend of mine sent this to me this morning. It says good leaders know how to get things done by working with people. Good That's leaders right. know how to get things done by That's working right. with people. With people. Good leaders aren't bullies who lie and threaten others That's right. when they don't get their way. And we're seeing some of that kind of leadership in Barbados where people are trying to bully others, trying to get their way. You don't lead by hitting people over the head. That's assault, not leadership. Yeah, this is yeah. Dwight Eisenhower, I'm the 34th president of the United States. Good leaders know how to get things done by working with people. Good leaders aren't bullies who lie and threaten others when they don't get their way. That's what we're seeing in Barbados. You don't lead by hitting people over the head. That's assault. 
and we're speaking that to every government minister that's what you come on the program to watch to see what's going on that's for you yes um, it's um, um, um Ramim says Ramim 67 he says Caswell don't waste the bush them want cast to roll <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> All right, so you guys, you guys are something else. <laughs> yeah, but we're we're closing. We're closing. Yeah. I mean, Mr. Franklin, you do you think you can take two minutes and and um tell us about this um uh the post the postal worker the postman what's happening with that whole surveillance um strategy there? Well, I I I um exposed it. I've spoken to a few postmen some of whom said they were willing when it was presented to them but now they understand what it's all about then we want nothing to do with it you see because they were told oh the Prime Minister want this and if the Prime Minister want it you know it must be done and so some of them didn't mind they want to be patriotic they said well you know if we, if we can get it done with they thought they were doing it for the country they didn't do it for the country they didn't know they're doing it for the country so I am waiting for more feedback now from the, from some others because I actually stop my postman here and talk to him when he comes to deliver my mail and mm. some others call me, some came to my office to um to, to understand what is happening. The the postal workers should not be used in this way. This this is I think it's partisan political work that you're asking them to do under the guise can you of, just um, quickly um review what it is there's some people who don't know thanks the, the the postman under the the legislation that was passed last year the barbarous national identity management act that act require you if you change your address you have 30 days in which to inform the chief electoral officer that you have changed your address failing that you are liable to pay a fee of five hundred dollars so what they want the postman to do is to come and spy on you and they will check to see how many people are in your house how many adults are in your household and if the, when the postman report on you they give them a little tablet to type in the information they got then you're in trouble. You are up for $500. And I said to the postman, you can imagine you informing on a fella who um, might be angry. And the next thing, and he got paid out $500. The next thing he see you, he got a sword, you know. And you're going to be running from dogs. You'll be running for the fella with the sword too. Get, stay out of that. It's not your business. It is not part of your job description. If the government wants to... Um, Implement this. Tell the people what they're doing, and see if the people about this will agree with it. Because I, I can assure you, it is not something under the, the legislation as it is now. Prior to this legislation, sorry, you, if you were not living in the constituency for three months, you can't vote there. You had to be there for more than three months or more. No, they want to say, and but this is even for voting purposes. No, this is to spy on you. To see, because you, you, you're not going to be voting every, every every three months, every time you get a new girlfriend or whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Listen, listen, I'm telling you, I am telling you, this is this is on a roll. This is this one is for you, right? Too many cooks spoil the broth. And if you think of bullying a child a chop is bad, try a right rhinoceros in the Senate. Oh Lord, I tell you. They, they, they know they know what time it is. Mm. But you know, it's it's a minute to ten and we are closing. Um Miss uh, McLean, what do you say to the people of Barbados? We're closing. This is a very important week that's coming up with the uh, estimates and so on. What do you say to them? What I would say is that as we prepare for the estimates and I mean for the for the budget and as we, we cut we approach the end of the estimates, it is unfortunate that we haven't had the opportunity to have some key ministries under scrutiny, but I believe that um, 
people should stay pay attention to to those ministries we, we talk about educate well education 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 housing um you know uh the 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 casual identified uh other people if i i saw a note that the there there are about three entities which come under the prime minister the prime minister has several critical areas under her um, control the the cabinet office the prime minister's office and of course she's minister of finance and when you look at those things you're talking about in excess of half billion dollars um so we need to continue the scrutiny of of these things um the 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 um country with a with a uh, a leader of the opposition is a single voice but I think that he has created some interest in, in what is happening in the country in terms of, um, you know, use of government revenues and so on. And we need to pay attention to that because people work very hard, sacrifices are made, and we need to be sure that we are getting the most out of the resources that we supply. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much, um, uh, Ms. McQueen. Um, Dr. Ferdinand? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to come back to this matter of trust, um, Marcia, because at the end of the day, I believe that everything that we do is built around that, that aspect of life. That you, you're trusting, trusting people with your future, trusting a government with your children's future, your grandchildren's future, in every aspect, education, agriculture, tourism, wherever it is revenue generators that are going to be paying back the massive debt that we have incurred and continue to incur it. And, and it's reason for some deep concern. I don't believe any Barbadian should be happy with the state of affairs where Barbados's debt is concerned. And, and the whole aspect of being able to repay it uh, comes out of a borrowing of, of funding to pay for the money you borrowed. And, and, and that is very concerning. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I really would like to just end from my aspect in, in speaking to the matter of decorum and decency and the whole aspect of being able to entertain criticism and, op and opposition. And, and I, I handle those two words very carefully um, in, in terms of knowing what you should do and how you should proceed. I believe it's a very important component of how you do your business. Thank you, um, uh, Dr. Mar Mar Marcia, somebody just asked uh, Lena Bella, I mean, if I saw the instance with the, um, poli with the police and the, the two union people yes. and the people in Kentucky, this, that, that is a worrying thing. And not worrying for, these, for the position that the union has taken. You know police go into districts and when they want to do their job, you see sometimes a rabble come to um, assault and criticize the police and harass them and thing. You be in Barbados can only realize that that is stupidity when it is you that the police going to protect, you know. And I am ashamed that the union, Barbados Workers Union, would seek to behave similarly. Let the police do their job. I went to a hotel recently and best just before the display hearing started, the police came but they were courteous. Remember the night when they missed the show, Marcia? Mm -hmm. the, the police came. They were nice. They were courteous. They were uh, professional. And they, they treated... They, they, um, they were certainly uh, behaving much better than senators. And... They, but they were, they, they were doing their job. Now, when the police don't go and... You have a, a complaint against some persons. And if the police see, well, I have enough evidence to arrest this person or charge this person, the union should stand back and wait for the outcome. Now, if the people were wrongly accused, then they can get their lawyers and they sue the company for defamation. They can do all kinds of stuff and do what wrong or fair dismissal, whatever they did. But leave the police alone to do the job of protecting us because let me do something. I forget about in my yard now, right? I go out there, you know. I call the police. I, I, I back in sport. If it's two monkeys up in the tree now, I, I can't tell if the monkey ain't going out there. I call in the police. Let the police do their job. Barbers, workers, junior, they were talking about they're 82 years old. Well, if they're 82 years old, they'll be able to 82 months. Them ain't, go, they, they don't have to, no, 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 no. Do not behave like the rabble roses in the communities. 
and one of the people who were behaving and uh, criticizing the, the whole situation is a lawyer i'm ashamed of her Thank you all so very, very much um, for being here tonight. Tonight was, um, I normally am not on that early on a Monday, but it's another great night um, tonight. And I want to just encourage um, everybody, um, stay firm, stay strong, mm, stay yeah, focused, I, I stay on target. Well, well, tonight, sorry, Marcy, again, sorry. T today is 39 years that Tom Adams passed. Okay. Oh, really? Yes. No, you know that is something that the barbers, the party should have been commemorating. You know, mm -hmm. but they don't. They, 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 you you only commemorate. You only commemorate. You, you only commemorate me and now. Nothing else. No Grant Lee, no Tom, nobody. Just me. But Tom today, 11th of March, mm -hmm. 1985. Tom died. It's 39 years old. Oh, 39 yeah. years ago. Oh, yeah. You know, and um. Well, um, thank you for that, um, Mr. Franklin. I just want there's some a comment that was made tonight and might have been taken out of context about Ghana and the nurses in Ghana. I think Angela Ferguson was correcting it and um, saying not all the nurses are, are that way. I don't think that's what Mr. Franklin was saying. No, I was talking about one specific nurse. One specific nurse. I want to say personally that um, we are very good friends with a lot of the nurses in Ghana. We support well, some of them are my members. Some of them are my members. One second, Mr. Franklin. Praise Academy mm -hmm. of Dance. We support them if they're putting on an event. We make we make sure we support them with sound system, whatever they're doing. We're a big supporter of Ghana and the Ghanaian nurses. And I just, Angela, I just want to wanted to clarify that um, tonight, right? I also mm -hmm. want to ask um, everybody to remember the book that we're studying is called A Dying Colonialism by Franz Franz. And um, to encourage you to read it, and especially, especially that chapter that talks about the boys of Algeria. We are going to do an essay competition on that, right? I'm, I'm working on something for that with an essay competition, and I will tell you when to submit the essay and when we're starting and so on. But that particular chapter, um, the voice. This is the voice of Algeria, and I would want you to read that book you can you can find a, a copy online a free copy online a pdf but if you can afford to buy the book buy the book okay god bless you all and we see you on um on wednesday we see you on wednesday all right have a good bye -bye. evening good Bye -bye. evening good evening good night. thank you everybody thank you thank you